everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fandelver and Below, The Shattered Obelisk. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly, I use he and him as my pronouns, and folks, we are heading deeper into Tresendar Manor uh, on tonight's episode of Fandelver and Below. I hope you're all doing well. It has been quite a week here at the Dork Tales Verse, and we are getting ready to go into a very exciting weekend that I hope you join us for. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment, but first, let's say hello to the cast, starting with... Christine. Hello, I am Christine. Uh, I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I get to play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martin Barraquel, our ASMR paladin. Nice. No oath yet, but no we know which yet. one is going. Vigilante justice. Um, well, duh. Duh. Not uh, the paladin oh, way. It's the paladin way kicked down. The Punisher is just a paladin with a shotgun, really, right? Maybe. I need to play that. Yeah, I kind of want to play that too. Let's just all play Punishers next episode, in our next game. Uh, let's pass over to Caitlin. Oops, all Punishers. Also, Caitlin forgot she was second on this round. Uh, hello. <laughs> I think that's what she said anyways. I was a little bit spaced out. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer of the group. And she also hasn't really shown what she's going to be yet, but we all know what she's going next level, so. Barbarian. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right, yeah. speaking of other characters with anger issues, let's go down to, <laughs> let's just go down to Lyric. Why not? Let's go to Lyric. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Lyric really has much in the way of anger issues. No. Not, not really. No, Lyric's really. chill as hell. I want, I want some of what Lyric has in their backpack. <laughs> It's all right. Just well, it's let not it anger issues. They're just really dramatic. It'll happen. It's, it's everything, not just anger. Mm. Well, yeah. hi, Amy. How's it going? Hi, I'm good. Um, it's going pretty well. Um, so my name's Amy. My pronouns are she, her, are they, them. And I am playing Lyric, the tiefling bard. Fantastic. Next to you, we've got our very own blade, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Krista. I use she, they, her, them pronouns. <laughs> uh, and I am playing uh, Carmilla Alazarin, uh, our Dampier fighter, who I came into this with a pretty good idea of what I was going to do for their subclass, but I'm not so sure anymore. So we'll see where it goes. You're just going to end up as a rune knight somehow? <laughs> Carmilla, <laughs> get <Honestly>. big! <laughs> there you go. Just start carving runes in. That's great. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, it's going to be Chris. Hi there. My name is Chris. I uh, use he or they pronouns. I am still a Sagittarius, but I'm not sure what Sindri's uh, astrological sign is. Uh, I'm a settler on unceded traditional KK territory, and I am so happy to be here. Fantastic. All right. Uh, folks, before we begin, I got to do a big shout out to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Uh, as always, Bookworm Games is your go-to place for dice all across North America and maybe even beyond. They do international shipping. You should check out their site where you can find all sorts of dice, 170 different types from resin to, uh, to plastic, to liquid core, to gemstone, to metal. You can even get familiars, like little friends to keep on your shoulders. You can get edible dice if you get hungry while you're rolling. You can get uh, teas and other potions to re-energize yourself, and you can even get a fantastic table. That's right, gaming tables are coming to Bookworm Games. You should go to Bookworm Games right now and use code DORKTALES to save 10% off your purchase because the holidays are coming and there is nothing that gets the ball rolling quite like dice. Does that work? There's nothing that rolls like... Just buy dice for your friends. It's a really good gift. Unless they roll horribly, in which case they're your enemies There's now. There's nothing that gets the dice rolling like gift giving. There we go. You're on the PR team now. Congrats. Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Um, and of course, the last thing that I have to say before we start the game is that uh, Extra Life is coming this weekend. That's right. It is only one, two, three, four days away that we are running 14 games over three days to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. These 14 games are going to be wild, wacky, uh, some of them a little more serious, some of them a lot less serious, and your donations can affect the story and, more importantly, can affect the lives of sick kids. 
a lot of the cast members of Dork Tales are alive and thriving because of groups like the BC Children's Hospital and other branches of the Children's Miracle Network. So please come, uh, watch, even if you don't have any money to donate. Uh, if you do, please remember that if you live in North America, that is a tax-deductible donation. So every dollar that you give saves you some money come tax time. And uh, every dollar you give also affects the life of a kid, which is a really big deal. So even if you can't afford, come out, watch, raise our numbers, because the more people that are watching, the more people that will come watch. People are like that. Uh, and um, besides that, the last thing I have to say is if you're bored on Thursday night before Extra Life, we are starting a brand new sponsored stream. We did character creation for it last Thursday, but uh, starting this Thursday, we are starting with episode one of The World Below, which is a new Onyx Path publishing role-playing game that centers on a sort of fantasy world where the, the surface of this world has become uninhabitable, dangerous, and even deadly, and the characters have had to generationally mine down into the depths, surviving in what can only be described as what if the world of darkness had its own underdark. That's the vibe that they're going with, and it's real good. I've got an amazing cast for that. Come see me on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, anybody else have anything they want to shout out real quick? All right. And uh, Chris, uh, you cleansed your dice? Or you have replaced them? <laughs> yeah, the old ones got sent straight to Dice Hell, um, which is the lowest level of Avernus, or the level below Avernus. Level so, below Avernus? Yeah, whatever that is. Probably level two. Um, level two? So hopefully no Nat 1 squad tonight. Banish that. And Nat 1 by, squad! So by mentioning it, I probably like re-invoked it, but who knows? Probably. All right, so without further ado, let's head back into Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Last time on Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, uh, the characters assembled themselves up after learning more about the Red Red Brand Ruffians and encountering them on the streets after meeting with an elder drow adventurer who gave them a map of the Neverwinter Woods and uh, decided to take the threat head on. They traveled directly to the tunnels beneath Tresendar Manor and encountered a strange creature in the cave system directly beneath the manor. A Nothic, a strange warped creature with a single green eye that could read people's innermost secrets. From there, they encountered a slew of bugbears, which they promptly slew, and rescued a small, strangely intelligent goblin named Droop who had a, a habit for fainting, a penchant, one might say. Uh, from there, they pr decided to rest up for a few minutes before progressing later, knowing that there was a group of mercenaries meeting, or thugs, we'll say, uh, meeting with the Red Brands in the room directly to the north of the hallway above them, uh, and they could continue their assault on Tresendar Manor. All right, and with that, does anybody have any last questions, comments, or concerns? Uh, for anybody who can't see the screen right now, Lady Alessandra and Sindri both have determination. Everyone else does not. All right. So I, I spent both of my uh, hit dice for my rest there, so Perfect. I'm back up to full. I'm reminded that I did Song of Rest for everyone, so they can add an extra, what is it, a D? I believe it's a D. Let me double is check. It, isn't it your bardic dice? Yeah. I'm this pretty sure it was a d6 because I did, I believe, a hit die and the d6 to go back to full. Nice. All right. So, with that, you take a rest. The half hour passes rather quickly. You bandage your wounds. You take a moment to meditate, Sindri, and regain your key points. Carmilla, you regain use of your short rest abilities like your uh, action surge and everyone takes a moment to recenter themselves droop peeks under the beds and as quietly as he can starts stripping out some of the bolts that hold them together it's the uh, only sound that you can hear droop my friend Yes, big buddy? How can I help you? What are you doing? I'm collecting nuts and washes. Okay. Um, why? 
Oh, because I think they'll be useful for the cart I'm building. I don't oh, want the right. screws. I don't want the the screws to, to strip the wood. You're a very industrious little fellow, and I respect you for that. I'm sorry. As you were. <laughs> no, no, no. Then you you can say that again. He crawls out from the, under the bed with a scramble, looks up at you with giant saucer eyes. Did you did you just say you 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 respect you? Respect me? Oh my God! No one, no one, especially no tall person like yourself, has ever said they respect me. I would die for you. You please don't. I don't want to. Um, Let's so once we're done here, we'll get you. We'll get you out of the cave. Of the cave here, we'll get you somewhere safe, and you can wait for us outside, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need a scout or nothing, right? I'm pretty good. No, at like... no, thank you. You're. I'm sure you're very good at it, but I don't want to put you in any more danger than you've already been in. Sindri is looking at Carmilla or Lady Alessandra to like get help, help, mm -hmm. help. <laughs> <laughs> Troop, you have been very helpful and we thank you very much. You're welcome. We, we recently lost a friend, though, because we we pushed him probably further than he should have gone. Um, and oh. we don't want the same to happen to you. Oh, that's fair. Um, well, I don't want to die neither, so if you if you help me get... I can just I can just hide in this room. I can hide under sure one of these... sure it's safe here? No, but I mean, I could go outside and get snatched up by an eagle. Is that a thing that happens? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, not to me, but to my cousin Ed. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I guess my ex-cousin. Oh, your ex-cousin? Yeah, he's still your cousin, even if he's dead. Well, I mean, he was a cousin-in-law, and his wife divorced him after. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I guess she had after, it annulled. Po he, she posthumously divorced him? That's yeah, cool. she was, uh, you know, my sister's Adage. a rough woman. Yikes. I mean, we respect it, I suppose. Yeah. He did just say that his sister mm. was married to his cousin. Goblin family Look, trees. That's none of my business. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> goblin family trees are goblin family trees. That's their business. Goblin, yeah. The goblin family bush. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Deep roots. Deep, deep, deep <laughs> roots. Short height. Yes. Very, very wide ranging. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I could just stay here if you want. Um, or we could we could go outside or um, I mean, whatever's whatever's the, the best for you. You you seem to know mm. this place best. So is it perhaps best if you you tell us what, what you think you will be safest? Um. I'm kind of worried. On my way in, I saw that there was a, a creepy monster type. I was there with a big eye. We have eye. an agreement with him. Oh, what? he's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hopefully, they're okay. Agreement. They're okay. That's better. Ish. Um. They weren't so... immediately hostile. Hostile. Oh well, that's Ooh. good. Um, I thought it was, I thought he'd be real hostile because, you know, he's here protecting his treasure. I gotta look at it. Yes. What is it? I saw him, he had a chest. He was pulling out of a cubby hall at the north of the tunnel. It had like a big chest. I mean, it was a big chest. It didn't have a big chest. It wasn't like a chest with a chest. In it. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, though, right? You pull out a chest and there's enough. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, but I saw him putting some stuff in it. It was full of coins. And it was full of some, like, some, some, the you know, the, the cylinders with the pop tops and the liquids in them. Um, like a, like, like a, a potion? Yeah, like one of those. And, nice. and like, there was a, a sword in it. Where's the chest? There's a cubby hole. Up at the up at the north. Um I can show mm. you. I think he'd be 
I think he'd be pretty cross if you tried to steal his stuff, so you might have to... F he draws a line across his throat. <gasps> well, we don't... It's still his... Th those are his things. Mm -hmm. We can well, I mean, he... just... He probably took him off a corpse. Or made a corpse. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, we'll, as long as... As long as we have our agreement, I don't see any reason to go resort to violence. Fair. Okay, yeah. Who am I the judge? Sidri's going to shoot a look <laughs> at someone, anyone, <laughs> who's like, get this goblin away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, Drup, I think it would be best, being that it is not always a safe world for goblins, especially in towns like this. Perhaps it is best if you go to see uh, Mr. Edermath. Do you know him? He is a drow that owns an orchard nearby. I know the orchard. I've taken some apples from it before. Very delicious. Well, don't mention that to the drow who owns it, because that is stealing, and he you... may not show as kindly on that. <laughs> You're funny. You can't own a tree. Well... Within some societies, you can own the ground the tree grows out of. Well, now you're, now you're you fooling me. You can't, go, you can't own ground. Ground belongs to everybody. Eh, a lot of people disagree on that. Oh. And those people but can nice. be very violent if you try to overrule it. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll avoid that then. Um. Well, perhaps can we can we send a note with you? to go see Mr. Edermatt, so he knows you are a good goblin, and that you yeah. are not with the bad ones that are down yeah. the road. No, yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can be a delivery boy. I don't mind at all. Perfect. And then, yes, I believe we did write a note last episode. So you wrote a note, and with saying... that... Okay. So with that, yeah. you'll wait out the end of uh, uh, the end of your short rest, as he kind of proudly holds this note in his hands and is going to look up and and walk over and give Cindery's calf a hug. You're like the best friend I've ever had. Alessandra Same little buddy. Is <laughs> All right. I'm going to head out. Practicing her noble face <laughs> to not laugh at this. I'm going to head out now. Wish me the best of luck that a hawk or an eagle or a kestrel. Or a pelican. Are we near the ocean? Good luck. Okay. I'll You're see never, you there. Like, that far from the ocean, really. Oh, yeah. It's always with you. I guess it's called the Sword Coast for a reason. Yeah. Hmm. I can't swim. Just anyway. because you have the ocean in your heart, Sindri, does not mean pelicans follow you. You understand oh, that, yes? That would be really unfortunate. <laughs> well, they wouldn't be able to be quiet pelican. at all. Better a pelican than an albatross, but, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm off. Best of luck to use. Dun, 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 dun. And he'll slide out the door and start stealthing down the hallway. Let's find out how well. No. <laughs> you know what? Actually, pretty good. <laughs> uh, that's an 18. So oh he's going to creep off down the hallway. And he throws his best. voice, so it, it sounds like it's coming from the other room. <laughs> I yep. suppose we don't need to escort him out. He seems to be doing a good job. I he think seems he to be doing a better job than we were. I think he forgot that he was supposed to be escorted out and just went. I think so. Uh -huh. I think he's got this under control. He's yeah. all bristled up on being respected. Right. Well, that, be careful about that, though. That didn't work out very well last time. Nah, <laughs> you know... Respect is something that's like a basic decency that I consider for people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really consider the impact for people that aren't respected by their peers. Um, mm. Why do people tolerate being disrespected frequently? Can anyone? Why? I haven't the foggiest. Well, when everyone that disrespects you also beats the living shit out of you and tortures you for disrespecting mm. them, you kind mm. of live with it. 
Or I would imagine uh, if they control your access to shelter and food. Mm, you know, or... you're right. Damn, poor little guy. Anyhow, shall we take this town? <laughs> shall we take this this manor back? Yeah, I think so. Seems as good a plan as any. Uh, Cinder's gonna like open the door a little bit to see if. You can hear that the, the gambling is still going on down the hall. Make me a perception roll. I'm so nervous. I haven't even test rolled these dice yet. Here we uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Now. Oh, okay. 17, 17, 17 plus. Oh, 17, 17, 17. That's a lot of 17s off one dice. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's a 22. Or, All right. Oh, 21. Nice. 21, yeah. That's that's pretty damn good. All right. So even down the hallway, you can hear, Oh, come on, you son of a bitch. You better raise or else I'll cut your balls off. <laughs> yeah, you and what army? Lord. Says a female voice. If you can find him, you can keep him, bitch. So it sounds as like there's at least two of them and maybe a horse. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> I think I'm very funny. Uh, does anyone else want to lead the way in this time? Certainly not. Is, is this it hallway all dark is... again, or are there torches around here? Uh, most areas are brightly lit by oil lamps in wall sconces, which are refued, uh, refilled every few hours. Uh, so you will see that there are a couple of sconces in the hallway in front of you. Perfect. That means that Anthea can see. <laughs> I can yes. see. Nice. You can, and you can see that there is some light underneath the door up ahead. It's not flush to the stone, of course. This is an old cellar. Perfect. Um, in that case, it, as long as Anthea can see and doesn't have to be at the front, um, Carmilla will take point. Oh, I see. Making your way forward down the corridor, there's a door in front of you. And you can hear the sound clearly of gambling and boisterous talking inside. Carmela, if you're in the front. I am at the front. I'm going to head towards the door as okay. quietly as possible. Okay. And uh, um, yeah, I don't know if I need to stealth to do that or are they being loud enough that it's not. Go empty? ahead and give me a stealth roll, but I want to really, it's a really low DC. Well, yeah, you say that, but I can't roll above a two, so... Uh, well, rolled above a two. Seven. Seven. Uh, and I have a plus two. So that's a nine. That's a nine? You have determination. I will use my determination to not fuck this up. <laughs> okay. So it's an 11. All right. So creeping up to the door. Sindri, go ahead and give me a roll as well. Uh, that would be a 15. Your new dice are doing well. Um, all right. So the two of you are going to creep up without a problem. There is going to be... All right. As you creep up, you can hear no pause in the conversation ahead of you. They keep going. They keep playing. You hear the sound of flipping of cards and the sound of someone doing a quick shuffle and then a ripple. Uh, I'm going to sit and listen for a second to see if I hear any more voices. Go ahead and make me a perception roll. Alternatively, uh, looking at the door, you can see that there is a small keyhole in it. Ooh, can I also look through that? You can. Make me a perception roll. And uh, looking through the keyhole will definitely lower. <laughs> As a two, and I have As no plus to that. So that's a two. Uh, so the keyhole is there, but as you look through it, you will see that someone left the key in it. The door does not appear Beautiful. to be locked. Uh, but you'll look in, and it'll just be like, you'll see it blocked. Okay. What do you see, Camilla? <sighs> a key. Shit. <laughs> it's, uh, do you, do you hear any more than two? I only hear two. Sindri, make me a perception roll. <laughs> what do your half-elven ears hear? That's a 24. Okay. You <laughs> did hear four voices. Four of them. Uh, I'll kind of 
give one of these to the rest of the crew down the hall. Uh, Lyric would like to shuffle along, trying to be stealthy. Alessandra will attempt to stealth. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Let's go again. Okay, that's that's not a one, because I'm a halfling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. Good job, Bach ASMR. So much stronger. <laughs> that's ten. That's ten? Alright, the DC was ten. To sneak oh, up. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Uh, I also got a ten. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this is the best party I've ever yeah, ran that, for. Well, I rolled a one, and then I had to roll again, and it was an eight, and I get plus two, so that's pretty fun. All right. Uh, so creeping down the hallway, <laughs> you can all find a good, a good place to kind of hole up in a row and prepare yourselves for the action ahead. You hear the sound of laughter inside reach a fevered pitch. And as you say that, I'm going to spit if something good happens for you. You're going to hear, <laughs> read them and weep, motherfuckers, you'll hear a woman's voice say. And then one guy will go, hey, you cheated. I saw, whoa, and the sound of a chair falling over. Now, now, Carmilla, the door. <laughs> All right, Carmilla. Oh, bust the door in. <laughs> Bam, kicking at the door and in front of you, you can see that there is a room with two bandits and two uh, red brand ruffians with their scarlet cloaks. Can I get an initiative roll from everyone? Ooh, that, wow. You couldn't have done better than that, huh? It's okay, I rolled a three. Jeez. Five Ooh. total. Okay, so I have a nat one for one of mine. I have an eight. Oh God, one, two, eight, twelve. <clears throat> okay, this is gonna be quick. Um, okay, top of the initiative here. We did you roll initiative one, Chris? Just setting that as like the initiative uh, group one. I rolled a twelve. Ah, uh, okay. Tr okay. Trying to keep track of what each roll set is for on the chat. There. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all thank right, God so I'm a halfling. <laughs> again? <laughs> Can't you not? Best like species trait ever, honestly. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, I hardly ever roll Christos those dice. I hardly ever roll that one, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, it's These not just me. Well. It's all y'all. Same. This game is cursed. <laughs> All right, I'm using so. four separate dice, most of which are bookworm, and they're, they're don't say that. Failing don't say that. Me. We need our sponsors. <laughs> hey, come on, send us love. Send, send, us, us, send love. us love and more dice. Um, okay, <laughs> exactly. so uh, I have okay. Uh, I have Lyric at the top, followed by Ella, followed by Sindri, who is tied with one of the red brand ruffians, followed by. Um, and Thea, followed by a red brand ruffian, followed by, uh, let's see, that is one, two, three, four, yep, followed by Carmilla, and I kid you not, bandit one and two, who rolled a one and a two. Love that. All right, me. kicking open the door. Uh, Lyric, you're going to see a straight shot ahead of you. Uh, the bandit at the southern end of the table has fallen over onto the ground and is presently prone for purposes of, of ranged attacks. But the rest I of them are just this. all sitting around a table. What do you do? Because Lyric is at the back of the marching order, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So the entirety of my party is in front of me. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure this has happened every combat. Yeah. Well, you're I'm usually a speedy not one. the first one to act, so. Uh, You've been pretty close to the top, almost everyone. Yeah. I suppose it's been a couple times, yeah. Um, All right, so what do you want to do? But, uh, do I have line of sight on? Yeah, you've got a rough line of sight. All right. Along your friends, um, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try and do this without hurting everybody. Um, we're definitely throwing a dagger because I need to get a different ranged weapon. Just as a as a thought. Okay, are you moving through your friends into the room to throw it, or are you trying to try to throw it all the way down the hallway? I was gonna try and do it down the hallway. Okay, now they're gonna have uh, they're gonna have half cover from that though. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so roll with yeah. disadvantage, please. If you're rolling, if you're rolling through one friend, I'd give you just a little bit of cover, but you're rolling through four people. <laughs> yeah, but if I pull this off, it'll be epic. If you pull this off, it's going to be great. It's All right. like three and a half, really. That's true. I, you know what? I won't count Anthea. <laughs> I can hide behind people. All right, let's see it. What do you so got? So if it's with a disadvantage, and are you that... attacking the red brand ruffian? Or I guess she's the first one in your line of sight, so you'll be attacking her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whichever one's probably standing up, I assume, because if they're down, I wouldn't really see them through people. Yeah, that's fair. All right, what'd you get? Yeah. Um, I would like to spend my determination. Okay. Um, to make that a sixteen. <laughs> okay, roll me damage. There is a wind-up and a dagger flies over Anthea's head, past Ella's hair, like almost oh parting it, uh, over Sindri's ear, and past Carmilla's face, and goes <laughs> right into the hand <laughs> of the red brand ruffian who is holding a, a hand of winning cards and pins it to the table. And she's going to look at her hand, look back at you, and just start screaming. For five piercing. Yep, she's definitely gonna start screaming. Whoa! From a dagger, nice. Okay. Uh, anything else you're doing on your turn, Lyric? Um, yeah, let's toss one of these bardics to. Let's see. Let's give it to. Uh, because Sindri keeps almost dying, but then so does Carmilla. But let's give it to Sindri. <laughs> thank okay. you, thank you. All right, so with that, it is Ella's turn. Ella, what do you do? Um, I don't know that there's much I can do through all these people. Per se. You can rush in. Like you can push past okay. your friends. Sure. You know what? I'm gonna run in. Okay. Bonus action, shield of faith. Okay. <laughs> yeah! I don't want to almost die this time. Okay, and a reminder, the bandit that's on the ground uh, is prone, which means uh, advantage against him. Okay. With melee attacks. I guess I will stand here then in the middle. And attack him. Okay. Are you doing lethal or non-lethal? To a prone man. Non-lethal, I guess. We did okay. kind of hold on to the other guys. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So we killed the doing... bugbears, but... Go ahead, give it to me with advantage, please. Oh. That's right, I forgot about the advantage part. Um, that is going to be a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah, that is an absolute hit. Roll me damage. Uh, that is going to be six damage. Six damage? All right. You bring the side of your sword down right against the side of the bandit's head, drawing blood and causing his head to buck against the ground beneath him. Uh, he's going to definitely be feeling that tomorrow. He's still conscious. If he's prone, does that still give him an attack of opportunity if I move out of his range? Yes. Okay. I will stay there then. Okay. Um, all right. Sindri and the Red Brand Ruffian with the pinned hand are up. All right. Are they surprised or are, they, are we going to They are surprised. So she is going to look down. At, she's just screaming at the knife in her hand. All right. I'm going to run up between the two of them. So I'm going to be... I'm going to do something that looks really cool. Okay. Um, what is and it? And hope this, hope this works real well. Uh, so I'm going to use my uh, base attack on the, or my cutlass attack on the person that's on the floor that um, okay. Lady Alessandra already hit. So I'm rolling with advantage with my cutlass. Yep. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's gonna be a twenty-four to hit. That is absolutely a hit. That's uh, very high for a bandit, we'll say. So that's gonna be seven points of non-lethal damage to them. Okay. So you are going to easily just crank him in the side of the head with your with the pommel, with the side of the blade. And the right. And so there's a person with their hand pinned to the table. So I'm gonna use my two martial arts attacks on them. So uh, so one is going to be a fail, and the other one's going to be uh, 21 to hit with that. So 21 to hit is going to hit. And that's going to be seven points of uh, non-lethal damage. All right. Seven points, you say? Yeah. All right. That is going to crack her right in the jaw, causing her to throw her head back in surprise. Uh, she's going to kind of half stumble onto the ground, her hand still pinned to the side of the table. All right, so that's going to be my turn, because that was my bonus action and my movement. Sounds good. And Thea, it is your turn. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to move forward a little bit, and then uh, mm, let's use this one. And I'm going to use Fairy Fire, because I never use Fairy Fire. Ooh. Um, but people are rolling poorly, although not this fight battle, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to choose a cube that is just those two bandits up there, because I don't want to... Oh, the ones with the bandit and the red brand at the back of the room? Yes. Okay, correct. so what does this look like for an alchemist? Um, it is yet another potion bottle okay. that actually probably is, is about this kind of orange. Yeah. <laughs> so just imagine kind of like a golden uh, shimmering potion, and she's just going to like lob it. Right to hit the back of the back wall of the of the room, so that it just splatters onto those two. Um, Perfect, and that's so that I don't hit Sindri in it. So they start glowing with this glittery glow that's going to give all well, of your allies advantage on them, right? They need a deck save, but yes, oh, they can do a deck save. Uh, yeah, they need a deck save. Great question. 15, 14, 13. Okay. All right. Um, the red oh, brand what? ruffian is going to uh, duck under the table, but the other one is going to get hit square in the chest with it. Fair enough. Oh, whoa. You, you know what? Could I have, like, moved that a little bit so that I splattered it on the table because I believe in Sindri? I mean, it. <laughs> sure, that won't help with the deck save. That's fine for that one, but that would also mean that it hits the other one. Potentially. Oh, so it'll hit Sindri as well? But I believe in him. Okay, I'll spend if something good Thank happens. You. Your last Thank one you to say that you did that, okay? Okay, sorry. Thank All you. Right. So I make a deck so, saving throw? Because I realize the DC is yep. pretty low. <laughs> okay, All right. so that is going to be fairy fire on two of them. Yeah! Deck save is 25, so. Yeah! I, uh... Thanks, guys. <laughs> Are you going to yell duck or something? Yeah. Uh, duck! <laughs> Without looking, Will Cinder will duck down. <laughs> All right. It fitters around, flitters around the room, uh, coating onto them. And uh, do you have anything else you want to do, Anthea? No. Sorry, I just thought my DC was higher. So I was yeah, like, well, I don't want to hit Cindry with it. But then I was like, it's only 13. I think he's fine. Yeah, he'll probably be fine. Carmilla! <laughs> Thank you. you are up. Okay. Um, I am going to... Do a little bit of a dancey dance and move boop, boop, ba doop, boop, boop up uh, to so that I'm not moving out of someone's uh, threatened range, but I mm -hmm. want to get to the guy at the back. All right, sounds good. Rushing forward, that you see this this ruffian, this this dwarven man, uh, this bandit stand up and kind of like start reaching for his axe in surprise, but he's glowing like he just came out of like a drag show in the front row. And like, he's like, his beard looks fabulous. Everything looks just so, you're almost sad to do what you're about to do. <laughs> he looks great. Uh, yeah, I will take a swing and being that everyone else, not sure why we're not killing these guys, but everyone else isn't. So I'm going to not, uh, Oh my god, yes! Okay, I have to roll it out of the cauldron, apparently. Um, because that And did is... you roll with advantage? Oh, I didn't. I can roll with advantage. Because you have fairy I? fire. I do. Um, that is a 
dirty 20. Okay. And that's a natural 19, so that's a 20, whatever. Uh, oh! And, uh, you, no, you? I don't oh. have the... No, no you have, have not decided better. to take your archetype yet, so... <gasps> okay. No, not yet. Uh, so I get the... I get re-rolls on ones and twos for my damage. Uh, but I'm two-handing this, so that's d10. And that's a four plus five is nine. Nine, all right. Uh, that's how much damage you do? Oh, damn, that's a lot. Um, all right, slamming your weapon into Wait, him. I lied. Oh. It's seven. All right, that is slightly different. I added my proficiency bonus, and that's not oh, correct. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, you are going to slam down into him, uh, definitely jolting him. He is still uh, still conscious and still quite glittery. Is there anything else you like to do? That's all I got, baby. That's all you got? All right, uh, then the final bandit is going to be unconscious. So that's nice and easy. All right, uh, so top of the initiative, Lyric again. Lyric, what are you doing? Well, I think that means I can now actually pass into the room. Mm hmm Now that everyone has gone in. So, Except for Anthea, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm hmm. hmm. I don't think I can... Oh, wait. The person, the... Is it a bandit right in front of me? The... That is a red brand ruffian, yes, who is afflicted with fairy oh, right. fire. All right, which means that if I try and stab them with my rapier, yes, you get they advantage. are. You get advantage. You gave, advantage. or Anthea gave you advantage. I always think yeah, of bards I'm cast that, but. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is oh, quite good. similar. I'm glad to I have advantage because mm -hmm. the other one is not good. And uh, am I am I correct in assuming that you said stab? Yes, with my rapier. Okay, so lethal damage. Yes. All right. I, I don't know. I'm just... Do it. What do you got? Hopefully not hitting any particularly uh, vital points, but yes. Uh, 22 to hit. That is going to be a hit. Roll me damage. <laughs> Six piercing. How do you do it? Her hand is still pinned to the table by your dagger. I was hoping to stab her in the shoulder. All kind right. of like dagger, like hand down and then like go for the opposite shoulder, just to like fully incapacitate. But um, this might just end up murdering her. It might just end up murdering her. All right, so you stab her in the upper chest shoulder area, your rapier plunging out the back. Um, um, and I think what would look super cool is if she did that and then grabbed the dagger with the other hand and yanked it out in the same, in like subsequent roll. Move that sounds action. great. And uh, she oh, will tumble to the ground. You have your dagger. Would you like to do anything else? You still have a bonus action. I would like to wipe the dagger off um, okay. on the ruffian's clothing. It is already red, so it doesn't even stain it. Good job. All right, uh, Lady Alessandra, it is your turn. All right, so one is knocked out and one's dead. Or bleeding profusely. All right, and the other two are not really all that damaged yet. The one in the back corner of the other, Red Ran Ruffian, has not been touched at all and was even able to avoid the fairy fire. The one that um, Carmilla attacked is definitely dazed with a large amount of blood seeping from a gash on the side of his head. All right. Um, instead of attacking anything, I would like to level my sword at the one that is undamaged and intimidate. Into okay. Giving up. Sounds Hopefully. good. Please roll with advantage because it is obvious as you were looking around the room, there are many barrels stacked in the corners of this room. Uh, and as glancing around, you could see that there are wooden benches drawn. Uh, pardon me, that's, uh, yeah. There are wooden benches drawn against the walls, decorated with red and brown draperies. And most importantly, to your nose and eyes, you are going to detect that there are several tapped kegs open and that have been enjoyed tonight. These uh, these combatants are quite drunk. 
Okay, so I think she's gonna say something along the lines of... Surrender and face justice, or die. <laughs> Alright, give it to me! Hopefully that will look like a better choice. Um, that is a 19. A 19? Alright, let me just do a quick... Just to see if they are particularly full of strength. All right, um, the the ruffian um, who is going to have next initiative along with Sindri uh, is going to raise her hands in surrender. And is, is that the one that I'm uh, square, uh, square, uh, I guess squared off across from? Yes. And the one that Carmilla is facing still has their weapon up, or? They still, they're still reaching for their weapon, but they have not acted yet. So they're still stunned and getting the, the crap beaten out of them. They look like mm. they are probably going to surrender, maybe, but the other one definitely is surrendering. Okay, so if the other one, uh, I'll wait, I'll, I'll hold my action for them to surrender. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, I'll just kick them in the face. That sounds like a very valid option. Um, all right. So holding your action, there is a moment of pause as the red brand ruffian is going to just slowly raise her hands and surrender. Okay, okay, I, uh, I don't, well, I don't want to die today. You don't gotta. Who the hell are you guys? You don't have a name. We're concerned townsfolk. We're new. Just We're just moving through. in. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of lowering the property value. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. just I'm just going to. Do you mind if I? And Lyric's gonna like bend down and start doing first aid on the one she stabbed. Make me a medicine check. Now, if you two want to hand you over your weapons, that would be a going long way. There's the sound of metal scraping across the floor as she kicks her sword over to you. Nice. The other one's gonna just. Oh, bother. Just kind um, of, like, look down at his axe. This might be a little more, um... Hmm. I miscalculated. Uh, and that's a five to medicine. Okay, so you are going to put your hand on the wound and realize that your rapier plunged out the other side, and there is a pool of blood about the size of uh, Anthea's torso beneath this woman. You look like you nicked an artery. Ooh. That's a lot of blood. I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything about it. Oh, no, this is this is far beyond my skill. Um, any, anyone? No. <laughs> no? So there's going to kind of... No. Nah. Hmm. So... Alessandra will back up and still have her sword out and kind of reach down to, to check pulse. Uh... Uh, fading, fading, fading. Lay on hands. All right. How many hit points? Um, one sec. You can do it in um, it's uh, you can do it in one point oh, doses. Yeah. Um, Paladins are stabilization monkeys. <laughs> uh, so I have a number of paladin level times five, so I've got ten points. I guess just kind of start trying to do it until it feels like they stabilize. You can one point one hit point will stabilize a dying character. Okay, I will do that then. Okay, uh, the blood is going to stop seeping across the flagstones. Oh, that thank you, Ella. Good job. Yeah, God's I suggest we tie these ones up. It. Yes, Ella, we'll get right on that. As you are, the, as you're looking around the room, though, I just want to let you know that all of the wealth in the room is on the table. Having been bet on the game, uh, you can see that there is a large pile of 75 copper pieces, 55 silver pieces, 22 electrum pieces, which are useless in most provinces, uh, 15 <laughs> gold pieces, and uh, a tiny earring set with rubies, uh, gold, gold and ruby earrings that look like they're actually worth quite a bit. Sorry, that was 75 copper, 22 electrum, 15 gold earrings, and how much silver? Five, five. Okay, Are you just you. scooping it up? Nice. No, I, I'm just going to, like, 
<laughs> uh, I grab the pouch of it and say, uh, Lady Alessandra, do you want to divide this later? <laughs> sorry, what was that? Uh, sorry, Carmilla, do you want to hold this to distribute later? <sighs> oh, is that you? <laughs> well, should we, who are we distributing it to? The townsfolk? Each other, each other. Why? Or the townsfolk. We need money. Me too. I have an idea, but I need money for it. Same. Well, perhaps we can give it to the townsfolk who have been terrorized by these people, and then they can decide how much they'd like to give us for our services. For our good deeds. Like that's a good a idea. A lot of extra steps. I mean. But fair enough, I suppose. And Carmilla it's probably does. fairly like expected that at least if you return the the belongings how do we know these aren't belonging to the townsfolk well i mean the earrings That's obviously fair. but well, you, perhaps you have um, raised a good carmilla point, will carmilla. turn to one of the red brands that are up <laughs> and say do these belong to you technically they belong to her she won them in the card game pointing at the at the unconscious red brand on the ground <laughs> Did They're they belong to someone in town and were taken unlawfully? Uh, the earrings? Uh, I think, I think, uh, I mean, they were his, so I think he got them off a merchant vessel. Pointing to the unconscious bandit. Right. Well, well if anything, we should give it back to the town. Okay. We can talk about this after. I agree. Let's keep going. Uh, so I'll, uh, Sindri will help Lyric tie up the the bandits. I also have rope, and I can help tie up too. Sounds good. <laughs> you can have, easily... have a look at these barrels. <laughs> they're pretty big. Like they're quite sizable enough that you could easily, um, you could easily like tie them to one. Yeah. Um... I'm gonna tie them to barrels on, like, not beside each other, like on different parts of the room. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Now, yeah, lyric will follow that example and help. Mm. How many more of you are there down here? Um, are you gonna? You're not gonna kill us? No, nope. not interested. Under the main house, there's probably probably another four or five of us. And then three of their party, she gestures to the bandit. They're staying they're staying underneath the foundation of the main house. Across the across the canyon. And then just through there's glass staff. Mm. I feel like I have to say, if you keep terrorizing the town, then we won't hesitate. But as long as you don't, then you're fine. So you'll let us go? As long as you don't terrorize the town anymore. Look. We'll let you go to the, the mayor. Yeah. Custody. Yeah. You got caught. And that sucks. Yeah. There's probably yeah. easier ways to make a living, honestly. I don't know. Robbery's pretty easy, says the bandit. <laughs> Can Elisandra to roll to, like, pull apart his logic and, like, <laughs> lecture on why, like... Make me a persuasion roll. There's lots of other Make me your Captain America persuasion roll. So you, you pull around a chair <laughs> so that the back is... <laughs> you pull around the chair so that you're sitting on it backwards and you go, so, you got caught being a bandit. <laughs> Not 20. Are you shitting me? <laughs> so go. yes, you, you do drag the chair around, flip it around like a cool youth pastor, and sit down and go, so, I would like got to convince them of the fact that there are lots of other professions they could be doing that are not more work, and they could have more fun without, like, the risk of, like, death and being caught by people hating them. You start talking to him about wanting to be a bouncer or something like that, that 
pays in beer and excitement, and occasionally, if you're at the right club, additional perks. Don't actually you know about those perks. <laughs> you don't know about the perks, but you do say that there's probably good things. All right, so uh, your your lecture series is successful, and uh, you know I've never seen it. I never thought about it that way. I was raised in banditry. My father was a bandit. He stole the profession from somebody else. Who stole his highwayman mask? Overcoming, it can be very hard overcoming our parents' expectations of us. Generational trauma is real. It's true. <laughs> I just wanted to make Dad proud. Oh, I didn't sign up for this. I could steal I I like anything except for self-respect. Yeah, this is getting really deep. I don't know. Well, at this point, I think you can steal it by doing the right thing. Yeah. I believe in you. Cinder's yeah. <laughs> so, so gonna like go. I like. Uh, where, which way to Glassstaff? <laughs> I don't know. I just. And the other, the other, ba the the red brand ruffy, and has like a tear rolling, just a single tear rolling down her cheek. Now like, that they are questioning all their life choices, um, <laughs> let's go kill an evil sorcerer guy. I just wanted to feel Perhaps. tough. I felt Did like I never measured up to my mom. A handkerchief? Here, here, just... just oh, I feel terrible. I deserve to go to jail. I mean... Well, well yes. Well, um, prison is, like, not really a useful function. It really doesn't rehabilitate anyone. Potentially, they might let you get off if you do work for them. With like a binding oath, maybe a geese? If there's a cleric around. I'm afraid of burns, she says. That's not what I meant, but... Me too, buddy. Don't blame me. If you're looking for glass staff, his, his, his workshops just across the hall to the north, and his 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 chambers just just through the, through that. He's always in one of those rooms. That's, uh, Thank you. That's very useful. Let's, let's get going. Just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so you like start like like miming like quietly stepping out of here. Well, Thank you. You're welcome. Lyric's gonna tuck a handkerchief like that she pulls out of nowhere and just gonna tuck it into like the front of one of their like their shirts or something just to be like uh, he here I guess I guess and mm, when you're going to time, follow Sindri. and if you have trouble finding work and you need work here she'll give mm. them her card mm. I'm thinking this is like a noble calling card from like the, like Regency period type thing really my family always needs workers I would be a good worker. Just like I mom! Have varied excitement. So if you have trouble. Okay. Bless you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> and she just kind of glows a little hole in me. <laughs> and she's just gonna, she's gonna question her life choices some more. Uh, Sindri, what do you do? What does everyone do? <laughs> considers how, how the value of the prison system in the carceral state uh, and then we'll proceed to that <laughs> north door where uh, uh, glass staff's supposed to be can I open that door? you absolutely can my friend <laughs> opening it you are going to reveal a small hallway in front of you that you can smell the dank air of the cavern that you initially entered over to the east coming uh, uh, coming up the stairs there <laughs> So dank. Uh, so dank. Can I can I listen to the door across the hallway? <laughs> Crenellations. So escarpments. You, escarpments. Yeah, it's an escarpment. <laughs> Down the escarpment. Um, God damn it. <laughs> you guys should be the escarpment crew. That should be your name. <laughs> the escarpments. Uh, do you do you just head into the other other room? I'm gonna listen at the door first. Okay. Make me a perception roll. 
I'd like to thank Extra Life for that really wonderful uh, dice holder they have. It's really nice. Yeah, right. Uh, that's a tw uh, dirty 20. A dirty 20. Uh, listening on the inside, you can hear the sound of some bubbling and Ooh. dripping sounds. But that's it. That's the only type of... You don't hear any one inside of there. Okay. Um, Sindri will just, like, peek the creek. Uh, is, wait, is there a keyhole? Uh, there is a keyhole. Can I peek it? You absolutely can. So uh, there's no key in this one, strangely. And oh, as you work. look inside, peeking through that, you'll see that the room ahead of you appears to be a wizard's workshop. A large work table is set up with um, alembics, retorts, distillation coils, and other alchemical devices. All of them stewing and bubbling away. Bookshelves are crowded with sheaves of parchment and strange-looking tomes. All right, I'll uh, open the door. Uh, if it's unlocked, I'll open it up. Sounds good. Uh, you can easily do so. The door is unlocked and will open up. You can see that most of the shelves are flanking the um, the western wall, and you can see that there is another door to the west, or probably to the east. I always do that. Why do I always do that? Uh, Sindri will hold up his hand to like signal everyone to like come with him, mm -hmm. and but also do one of these to ho ah. hopefully inspire some degree of wow. restraint or quiet. Oh. Oh. And then sneak but, to the other door as well. But I wonder what they're doing. And Thea, would you like me to make? Or would you like mm -hmm. to make an Arcana roll? Yeah, I would love to try. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, 19. So 24. So I got uh, real 19. excited, real close to everything. Mm -hmm. Looking at the oh, 24, coils, actually. The apparatus that's set up here looks like it's set up to brew a potion of invisibility. But it looks oh. like he's missed something crucial in the process. And you can see that he has his, um, his distillation is improperly set up. You think that given the materials here, you might be able to finish the job in about an hour and get a potion of invisibility. So, question. Yeah. Question. Uh, no, sorry. Question to the party. Hi. I think they're trying to do an invisibility magic, but they didn't quite do it right. But if I have a little bit of time, like maybe an hour or so, I would be able to finish it because they have everything here, they just didn't do it properly. It's a little amateur work, but that's okay. D do you want me to do it? Or do we not have enough time? I'm not sure we have the time. Oh. But perhaps after? Yeah, okay, I'll remember this place. She's gonna sketch it down in her notes. You could also see that um, there is a large stack of books available there. Might be interesting to look over later. Okay. I'm coming back to this place. I'm just going to make a note of it. And as you say, I'm going to make a note of this, or you think that to yourself, uh, anybody who is inside of this room is going to hear a soft but audible bang in the next room that sounds um. like a door shutting. What do you do? In which direction? Uh, in the... It looks like you just hear it in the western room. Coming from the room connected to this one. To the east. Right. Uh, yes, to the Carmilla east. will make a run for the yeah. door. Okay. Uh, throwing open that door, you will see the walls of this bedchamber are covered with drapes of scarlet cloth. The furnishings include a small writing desk with matching chair, a comfortable looking bed, a wooden chest at the front of the bed and as you run in you will see that a slight crease in the top northeastern corner of the room is is kind of banging a secret door opened and is banging from being swung closed <clears throat> you imagine you think that your quarry is on the run let's go Let's go. Oh, okay. Uh, Sindri has uh, faster movement speed, so he'll probably 
uh, get going before, uh, like in front of Carmilla. Okay, can I get an initiative roll from everyone? I have little legs. Ooh. Oh, okay. I thought that... You know what? That For the first nat 20, I'll take it in initiative. Yeah, Ooh. buddy. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's yeah, this is way better. <laughs> I'm ever going to roll over 10, except me. <laughs> Oh, I almost got a 19. Classic. Right. But it rolled over. I'm paying for that at 20. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was very worth it. Okay, so let's do initiative as you are running down there. What I have is I have... Ooh, wow, I've got Krista with a 22. So Carmilla, followed by Sindri. Followed by... Someone else? Followed by a... Really in a row, actually. That's real good for, for y'all. Um, that is going to be followed by Anthea. Followed by Lyric. Who was tied with someone. Uh, then we are down to... Oh, wow. So, yeah, you're really at the bottom there. So, uh, then we have Alessandra and we have someone else. All right. Uh, bursting through the door and running. You're spending this round doing movement speed. Are you going to just be doing double movement as you are running down the hall? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, rushing through, you can see a pair of doors. Um, Carmilla, so you got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Uh, if you're doing double move, you'll see that there is another door ajar at the end of this small stairwell that you rush up that goes deeper in the facility. Uh, as you step through the door and look around, you will see that there is a, uh, a large, well, there is a storeroom here. Uh, the area at the north end of a large natural cavern that you will recognize as the top of the cavern with that large cleft that Lyric fell down in the previous episode. Um, you can see that there is dressed stone block walls and flagstaff or flagstone floor that leads further into the main compound. Uh, several barrels are stored here against the walls along with empty crates and nails. The cavern continues for some distance to the south, as you know, and it looks like there is a small a door wide open, actually, at the northeast corner of the room. Which way do you I'll head? continue as far as I can go. Okay, so that's 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So you can make it right to that door. Um, all right, uh, then, Sindri, you are up. What do you do? All right, so I've got 80 feet of movement uh, if I double son. my movement speed. So I'm going to uh, do the same thing. So uh, diagonal here for five. And 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45, 50, 55, 60. 60. Uh, through this door? Yeah. 55. Uh, is the door south open? The door to the south appears open. Oh, shit snacks. Uh, pardon. Uh, <laughs> Never. Uh, so the door is south open, so I'll look through here and see what I am... Very just pleased to see at the bottom of the room there. All right. As you rush forward past Carmilla, pushing through the hallway there, uh, you are going to see that you are looking directly into the Tresendark crypts. Three large stone sarcophagi stand within this desolate crypt. Six skeletons in rusty mail are propped against the walls as if guarding the place. False columns along the walls are carved with the image of spreading oak trees. And as you slide up, the skeletons are all going to turn and look directly at you. God damn it. <laughs> Umberly, take me. This is not what I want. Uh, and you will see that there is a man with a brown beard rushing through the room. Oh, darn. Oh, sugar. Oh, snacks. Uh, so, oh, he's right there. Uh, I still have movement. Uh, I'm so far split. This is such a bad idea. This is so so dumb. Uh, 70. Oh, God, they're right there. 
No, <laughs> not running through. I hate this so much. So you just gotta like run into the room and go eat squeal. Yeah. Having just used all my movement and all my actions. Uh, cause I can't use bonus actions unless, or my, I can't use martial arts unless I make an attack, right? So. Yep. Uh, you know what I will do? I'll use one of my key points to use patient defense and add myself dodge. That sounds fantastic. Um, you can also use, um, step of the wind to use a third movement. Yeah, I don't want to go any deeper into that room, and I don't want to really... Oh, I meant run back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I could move back, because uh, I still have uh, some movement back. Uh, so I have 70, so I could move back like 10 feet. Um, You'd only take one attack of opportunity. Actually, yeah. You, and it, yeah. yeah, I'll do that. I'll move back. Thank you. Because that way sure. we're fighting them in a hallway and not fighting seven on one. Well, if you if you're if you still have ten feet of movement left, you could still use your bonus to do your defense, to disengage. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And then that way, and then, then you, well, and then you're disengaging so that so you're you, not getting attacked by. He community. he couldn't dis disengage. Unfortunately, that's a rogue ability. Oh, I thought monks had a version of it. No, at this level, I have flurry of blows, patient defense, so dodge and step of the wind for a dash. Oh, dodge. Okay, so yeah, dodge yeah. is what. I, yeah, so you could dodge. So, as as you rush into the room, you'll see this man with a short brown hair, short cropped brown hair, um, and a short brown beard uh, turn. He's wearing princely uh, a princely mantle of ermine, boots, gloves, and robes that are trimmed in the same fur. A dusty glass staff is in his hand, and as you turn, he goes, well, hello there. Get him. And one of the skeletons is going to turn around and use patient defense. Uh, so that is, that's real lucky for you. Uh, the skeleton is going to slam its sword into the wall where your head was a second ago, and you are going to scramble back down the hallway. Yeah, my AC right now with that is 19, so. 19? Oh, beautiful. Uh, because I would have hit you and then I rolled a two thanks to that disadvantage. All right, so, um, then it is my turn. Uh, glass Staff is going to raise his eponymous Glass Staff, and I'm gonna spend a Hertha more. Sindri, do me a favor, and um, do me a favor, make me a Wisdom save. Hey guys, hey, hey friends, guess what I found? I got, I got it, I got the one. There it is. There, there it is. is. Okay. Um, he looks up at you. Hey friend. You have friends with you. Stop them. Uh, I used charm person on you. I used a, uh, a hurt the more for you to roll oh. flat. Oh, there we go. Shit. Yeah. All right. Skeleton one is going to lurch to life and uh, he will say, don't hurt the one with blue hair. The skeleton will nod and join the skeleton war and will move through you, ally, and take a swipe at Carmilla. This is just like training. All right. Carmilla, the skeleton is going to lash out at you. That is going to be an 18 to hit you. That'll do her. Okay, that is going to be a D6. Uh, that's three points of slashing damage. Okay. As it rattles forward and is going to slash across your upper arm. Uh, Anthea, it is your turn. What do you do? I am running. Running after them. Woo -woo -woo -woo, fast as the wind. But actually slower. I only have 50 feet of movement, so... Fair. So how far can you get? You can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40 So you can get here. Oh. You can get, if you ran diagonal, you can get five more feet. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. That's what I didn't do. Don't forget to always go diagonal because this isn't Pathfinder. Okay. I so think I gonna... just, yeah, for some reason, I haven't played Pathfinder in forever, but for some reason that just sticks in my head. The, the, the foot and a half? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lyric, you're up. What would you like to do? Unless, Anthea, do you have a bonus action? I do not. Okay. Not yet. 
All right, so Lyric, what's up? Um, I think Lyric had half a mind of checking because the hallway that we came through had a stairwell up, right? Uh, the hallway you came through had a stair that was leading down into the cavern, yes. Oh, okay, sorry, down, yeah. So, I think... That might be faster, it, yeah. Yeah, I think she's, she doesn't actually know what the route is, but she is going to try and see if she can detour, but this might just end up having her completely separated, which is, you know, also a great adventure. Um, and she's going to be running full tilt, so double speed. Um, okay. So, this is fine. So let's go. One, so you can make it all the way. Uh, rushing down, you'll find yourself in the cavern once more. The green-eyed creature is going to kind of like loom over and stare at you and go, Leave me. in your mind as you run. Uh, and you are going to rush down over the northern bridge and back up seeing Anthea. Oh, that's convenient. Right in front of you. <laughs> okay. Do you have a bonus action you'd like to use? I would love to throw my last Bardic Inspiration at Carmilla, who I can just see, I think. Okay. Sounds yeah. great. Uh, as you are doing that, a, a second skeleton is going to amble into the hallway, draw an ancient shortbow back, and fire at Carmilla. Uh, and it is going to just clank off the wall next to your head. You've got too much cover for it around that corner. Uh, but it doesn't, you know what? It tried, and that's what's important. We're big fans of the trying. Um, all right. Uh, with that, Glassstaff is going to try to make an exit. Okay. Uh, skeleton number three is going to move across the field. Skeleton number four is going to move across the field. And they're both going to try to take pot shots against you as well. Um, you know what? I'm I'm nothing if not fair. Uh, one of them is going to manage to hit you. Uh, you are going to take two points of piercing damage as an arrow banks off the wall and hits you, grazes by your shoulder. However, oh my god, really? Um, the one at the back is going to aim, fire, and with their natural one, is going to shoot the first skeleton that slashed at you right in the back of the head. The arrow is going to go duk -a -duk -a -duk -a -duk -a -duk in the back of its skull, only doing four points of damage to it because I rolled max. But uh, it is uh, it is not as vulnerable to piercing damage as... Oh, actually, it totally is. I'm thinking Pathfinder now. Damn it. So in that case, uh, that is actually uh, eight points of damage. So that's... Uh, so damn near taking its head off. Its jaw is going to fall off from the rattling. And it's going to look down at the jaw and look back at the one behind it and give the other skeleton this look like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Um, and Ella, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I guess I am also following along. Okay. Uh, so you can either make it directly next to Lyric if you go to the south, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So you actually, if you take the northern route... Yeah, you'll be able to get right next to Anthea and actually five feet ahead of Lyric. Okay. But I am there, and that is where I guess I'll stay, which I don't know what's happening yet besides we're chasing, so. Okay, you'll be able to see a skeleton through the northern door in in a fight with Carmilla. Its jaw has cracked off of its um, off of its skull and is kind of glaring back down the hallway, pinpricks of orange fire in its eyes. Um, okay, Skeleton 5. I think I'm at enough of an angle that I can't do anything about that, though. Yeah. All right, top of the initiative again. We have Carmilla. Uh, I'm, I'm a swing at this thing in front of me. I believe in you. Uh... Oh, that's a 19. Plus 5 is 24. All right, roll me damage. Awesome. D10... That is a seven plus three is ten damage of slicing damage. All is right. It is? Uh, it's slashing, yeah. Slashing. I said slicing. Slicing damage. <laughs> it's similar. It's similar. Either way, uh, 
um, you are going to take its head clean off, and it's going to hit the ground, sounding like an empty bucket as it rattles around the floor. Uh, and what would you like to do? Do you have a bonus action? Uh, she doesn't, but for all intents and purposes, um, she, I'm going to assume, notices that they're not attacking Sindri, and will look to Sindri and be like, Sindri, we are your friends. All right. Sindri, it's your turn. Hey, like, I'm, yo, know, these skeletons are awful. And I know you're my friends, but that guy is pretty chill. Seems like not a bad guy. Like, you know, I think we can really work it out with him. You know what? For leading into you charm half, person, I'm. Half? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm like, gonna get. You know what? Oh He's He seems all right. <laughs> what would you like to do, Sindri? I'm just going to stand in the way. I'm going to give you a point of inspiration for playing it up well, because it's hard to do Thank that you. with Charm Person. <laughs> I'm just going to be, like, really inconvenient. Um, and this lasts, like, an hour? Uh, yes, it does, unless someone gives you the bop. Okay. Uh, yeah, it lasts for one hour um, until you and your companions do anything harmful to it. Uh, the charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance. When it ends, the creature knows it was charmed. Yeah, he seems all right. Okay. You get to re-roll if you take damage. Uh, it ends if you take damage, if I'm not mistaken. From anybody? <laughs> until the spell, or until you or com your companions do anything harmful to it. Uh, no, I actually, think, that doesn't. That's yeah. that's Pathfinder again that we're getting stuck in our head for some reason. There's Damn no way to end it for an hour. Wild wild right okay so he's just kind of gonna be like whoa guys what's going on uh anthea it is your turn okay um for some reason i hadn't thought about what i really wanted to do in here but i think i suppose i'm just gonna kind of go behind carmilla mm -hmm. and then go in front of carmilla and see three I'm skeletons in a row to... oh my goodness um sindri what are you doing there's skeletons uh mm, bombs away and she's gonna throw a firebolt down Perfect. into the hallway okay go ahead make me attack on the first one let's go let's go Woo -hoo. that's a 14 plus 5 is a 19 that is absolutely going to hit roll me damage nice Hasha. <laughs> three points all right, uh, your fire bolt is going to sail down past uh, past Sindri and impact the first one, igniting some of the rags that are around it. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to do? Take that. Hey, hey, stop that. What? What? No, just a little banter. <laughs> yeah, just nothing. Just you know, like, hey, you don't go, you don't gotta do that. Uh, uh. All right, well, Lyric, you're yeah, up. Yeah, you really have to do that. Continue, continue that. Uh. All right, Lyric, you're up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I sure am. Um. Uh, I think Lyric's gonna move up to try and get a sense of what's happening because she hasn't seen any of the skeletons yet. She just kind of heard some of the dialogue. Maybe heard a little bit of mention about skeletons, but you know, whatever. Um, Lyric, there are a bunch of skeletons, and someone has decided that Sindri is against us and is buddy buddy with him, so perhaps we should do something about that. Sindri, uh, <laughs> as Lyric is like kind of moving up to look, the skeleton behind you is going to draw back its bow, aim at, aim directly down at Anthea. And oh, no, as no, no. it as it draws back, its finger bone's going to slip, and it's going to shoot you directly in the foot. Ow! Because I botched. Ooh, yeah. For three points yeah. of damage. Oh my god. Uh, you, um, well, actually, technically, if you or your companions do anything harmful to it, the skeletons are on his side. So there you go. Part of me you, was wondering charm... if they would think that that Anthea oh. counted as the one with blue hair as well, if that hair? would confuse them. Oh, 
That That's all asshole. he said. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. No one else. What? That guy. I'm going to turn what around and like, square up with the Why are there skeletons? Who ordered skeletons? No one likes skeletons. Um, I would like to attempt a vicious mockery one of skeletons. I feel like Lyric like peered around the corner of this and sees this and is like, how about no? The how first about one. No? The first one fails. Shouldn't you be dead? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. It's a string of insults laced with subtle enchantment at a creature you can see within range. It need not understand you, but it needs to hear you. Uh, it has ear holes. Yeah, it's close enough, and it was able to un uh, receive orders, I suppose. Must succeed a wisdom save or take 1d4 psychic damage and ha have disadvantage on the next attack. I can't attack believe I rolled that as a nat one. I'm like, if I roll a nat one, this will happen, and then it rolled a nat. I can't believe that. So I'm definitely aiming at the one that is the closest to Sindri and saying, Oi! You mishap in xylophone! Reject! Um, and a d4 is uh, three psychic. Okay. Three psychic. Oh, holy shit, Amy, that was so good. You misshapen xylophone reject. It's going to look at you, and its eyes are going to flare, and the red flame is going, or the orange flame is going to turn bright red as it looks at you, and it's going to chatter angrily. Uh, and then it is the other skeletons who are going to draw back their bow, and now. Uh, seeing that Sindri is square, you know, they're still going to follow their orders until until he takes one of them on, uh, which means a shot at Anthea, which is going to be a miss, a second shot at Anthea, which is going to be a miss, because I am rolling with disadvantage to shoot through uh, so many people. Um, and then, you know what? I'm going to try it. A shot and a miss, and... Okay, uh, and then skeleton number five coming in clutch, uh, and Thea, that is going to be a... Does a 17 hit you? Oh, yeah, just. Okay, that is going to be five points of piercing damage as oh. arrow after arrow after arrow flies <laughs> down the hallway until one kind of hits you right in the side. Ooh. How? That's even, that's improbable. It is. Ella, you're up. I can't move anywhere. Yeah, you're kind of... Always... Yeah, I'm stuck where I am. At this point, because the skeleton... You can't move through the doorway because the skeletons are there. So mm -hmm. I guess I will wait here. <laughs> okay. Are you going to move up to the back is, of your friends? The, the door... Yeah. The door that's next to Anthea, is that openable? <laughs> Nobody has tried. <laughs> I don't know that I want to open it and risk adding Fair more point. <laughs> enemies to the fight. <laughs> Pity that nobody has Thunder Wave. It is Sorry. really true. Um, okay, so uh, as that occurs... Yes, I, I will hold action for if one gets through to me, I will then hit it. If that works. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so holding your action there. It is the start of a new turn. And as that occurs, anybody with a passive perception of 15 or higher is going to hear the sound of a door opening. All right. That's me. That's you. Okay, top of the initiative. Carmilla, you're up. Uh, ooh, well, uh, yeah, I guess I'm kind of in the similar situation that I can't really get forward. Um, hmm. Maybe if we, like, like fell back and, like, created, like, a well, defensive corner. Question. Hmm. Could you? You can't walk mm -hmm. on the ceiling. Can you walk on the wall, though? Make this 3D? Is it is. I unfortunately, I have a climb speed so I can climb, but it takes my hands. So I could mm. theoretically, how high is this ceiling? 10 feet. Can I climb? Oh, it's only 10 feet. Okay, yeah. So I'd still be like within their reach, I guess. Even oh, if I, I like climbed and like spidered along the wall above them. Yeah, um, once you get spider climb, get you can do all sorts of crazy them. stuff. Yeah, because I have a climb mm. speed. 
Yeah, but that will take hands and feet. You have to spider man it. Exactly. So yeah. So if if it was like if if it was like fifteen feet high, I could like just go to the edge of the ceiling and climb along the wall. But um, unfortunately, um, can I? You know what I'll do? I'm just gonna pull out um, a hand axe. Okay. Now, if I throw a hand axe, can I use my bonus action as an offhand attack? Uh, you can do, yeah, you can. You can do two thrown weapons. Okay, I'll do that then. I'll th- I'll throw both of my I'll allow that. Uh, hand axes. Awesome, thank you. Uh, that is a twenty. Okay, that will hit. Two. Okay. Uh, so hit one is a twenty-two, and then and number two I, is. I'm only giving them partial cover because you're only throwing through one ally technically, because you can lean around the corner okay. and avoid Anthea. Okay. Perfect. So, so do, am I rolling at disadvantage? No, you are not. I the, their AC oh, oh. is just slightly higher. Got it. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then the second one is going to be a seventeen. Okay, roll me damage on both. Uh, give them to me awesome. separately, please. Okay, not a problem. Uh, those are d sixes. Uh, that is a fa- a six. Okay. All right. The first and... one, your axe is going to, and you don't remember you don't add your strength bonus to the second throw. Right, okay. In that case, it's a one. <laughs> okay. All right, so the first one is, how do you do it on the first skeleton? Uh, I think she's gonna... Uh, sheath her sword. She can't move at all, so she's gonna quickly sheath her sword as she draws both hand axes in one hand, splits them, leans around, and hucks both of them towards the skeleton sort of going on either side of Sindri's head. Nice. All right. The first one's going to go down in a xylophonic clatter of bones. uh, And the other one is going to go right through the collapsed skeleton and slam into its breastbone uh, where it is going to be embedded. Kind of going... All right. That is going to be your turn. Sindri, you're up. I am... So sorry about that. And he'll turn around and start, uh, he'll square up down the hallway. So he'll move into this space uh, and try and switch to unarmed strikes because they have resistance versus uh, slashing, right? I don't know. You ever fought a skeleton before, Sindri? No, but like it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and stab one. Uh, no, it doesn't. So I'll try and uh, kung fu. Uh, I know kung fu. So I'll take a kick at the first one. Uh, that is a 15. That's a hit. Roll me damage. All right, cool. Uh, that is six points of damage. How do you do it? So I'm just going to grab this one by the throat and slam it into the wall. Uh, it collapses with that. All right, and there's an... Oh, sh- Red Brands! Uh, As you step into the room, you can see Red Brands pouring out of a passage to the side. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, my uh, second key point to do uh, Flurry of Blows. So I'm going to okay. do two, uh, two attacks against the skeleton. Okay. Well, I'll do one. Can I divide them or do I have to call? You totally them, uh, can. Both? Yeah. Okay. So I'll do my first one. Uh, so that is uh, 16 to hit. So That's a hit. That's going to be seven points of damage against the skeleton. How do you do it? I can grab this one and slam it into the other wall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, there's, oh god, there's skeletons and red brands. Um, I'm actually, you know what? Fuck these skeletons. Oh, I'm sorry. How much am I allowed to swear on the channel? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I've moved. Fuck these skeletons, five. Chris. Yeah. Uh, bam, 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 and then go up to the last one. And, uh, do I have to roll with determination? Or if I'm using determination, do I have to, or not determination? Uh, Inspiration? You can you can ro- roll before or after, but you can't re-roll in that one. Okay, so I rolled a rolled a sixteen, so okay. or seventeen to hit. So okay, um, where did I, where did that? So you've run up to the last two here. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be uh, six points of damage. Six points of damage. It is still holding on with the barest. <laughs> bit of Ugh. necromatic energy as you start cleaving through these guys, <laughs> karate chopping them, almost as if they are vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. Yeah. <laughs> Screw or these guys to Kung Fu. Yeah, yeah, Kung Fu's my weakness too, skeletons. Don't feel bad. Alright. 
Uh, it is Glassstaff's turn. Glassstaff is going to do what Glassstaff does. Run away? Basically. Yep. God damn it. And Thea, it is your turn. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's lots of things going on. Um, 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 um. I'm going to step down the hallway a little bit. Okay. I'm... Yeah. Actually, I'm going to back up and let the fighty fighty people actually get somewhere. So I'm not going to do any. I'm just, I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to go backwards and be like, never mind, just kidding. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go forwards until I can get a beat on some, ooh, on something. Sorry, go ahead. Ah. Yeah, go ahead. So how close? Because as you are running up, the, the first red brand is going to chase you down the hallway. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, um, take uh, this, uh. And I'm going to try to fire a, like, crossbow All right. bolt. Actually, it's probably still down at my hip, so, because I used right. it on the bed. Make me an attack roll. Let's go. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's gone forever. Never mind. Uh, the other one probably would have been better. Um, yeah, no, that didn't hit. That's a 14. I mean, that's a 12, so I'm not going to use my... Okay, sounds good. All right, you are going to fire a bolt, and he, or pardon me, uh, this red brand is going to chase you down the hall, uh, drawing her short sword, and is going to take a swing at you. That's going to be a 19. Yep. Uh, and that is going to be eight points of piercing damage. That hurts. I don't All like right. it. All right, then Skeleton 2 is gone. Lyric, you're up. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um. Well, there's one right in front of Anthea. Carmel is also in the way. This is very inconvenient. Um. Mm -hmm. I. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to try and go for the door on the other side of Anthea if I can like squirrel my way past. Okay. Um, like into that other room? I'm very small. Yeah, I think we, we haven't it. gone through it yet. All right. So yeah, as ahead. you, um, as you push toward that other room, one moment, please. I don't know if you want me to do it like an acrobatics to try and get No, past. you can move through her space easily. You will take an opportunity attack if you leave that square. Uh, pushing into the room in front of you, um... If I choose to disengage as my full as my action while moving through, would that be okay? Uh, yeah, totally. Um, now I can't. Oh, is the door locked or? The door is locked. You slam into the door Aha. as you try to rush through it. I do. I sure do. This is really unfortunate. Um. Hmm. Hi, Anthea. This is awkward. You oh, can try to um, if you. I <laughs> okay uh, so you're gonna rush oh, forward yeah. bounce against the wall and then <laughs> scramble back out of the way uh we'll try and do that but we'll actually probably end up I'm, I'm, what I'm imagining is that she tries to sneak past like go past and grab the door realizes it's locked and then turns and is gonna try and gonna opt to just like full just fling herself at the ruffian because yeah. You can't. Narrow pathway. You use your action for di for uh, for um, uh, disengage. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this would just get her impaled on a sword, but it might distract. Yeah, you've already used your action, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't. Can I actually like, get pat back then? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Basically, well, you rush up, grab the door, and go. Oh no. Well, well. That's locked. Um, trapped. Okay. And that is my full action because I can't think of a bonus action that would be useful right now. Okay. One of the red brands is going to rush out of the hallway and is going to level a blade at Sindri's back, taking a swing with a 23. 23 uh, hits. Eight points of damage. Yo, what is the deal with uh, that? Ow. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm still up. Uh, You're still up? Okay. Yeah. So eight 
Math, it's just math is hard. That's fair. All right, the other red brand is going to step into the hall. See, if I can get a killing blow on you. Uh, Anathe, uh, attack of opportunity for Manathea or Anthea. Attack of opportunity for Manthea. If he's leaving their space. Oh no, there's more. Oh. Another one rushes out of the side room. Uh, he's going to sweep up one of the short bows uh, and fire at Anthea. Because I think she figures that between the other red brand and the skeletons, you're covered. Uh, that is going to be a... Does a... 13 hit you, Anthea. Okay. Negative. An arrow is going to clatter next to your face. And Ella, it is your turn. <laughs> okay. I, I have a question. This might affect Anthea or uh, uh, Alessandra. Um, yeah. So the shove attack. Yeah. Can you argue that you're running around the corner to tackle them to push them back five feet? You literally did you <laughs> read my mind. I was going to try and grapple and move them and ask if I could do it while technically standing in a friendly square, but I'm trying to kind of essentially bull rush shoulder through them. Grapple? Yeah. All like right. football Let me tackle. Because the, the, sh the, the shove attack is an attack action that pushes someone five feet or pushes them prone, but I'm not, I'm just wondering if that's a thing you can do with a friendly square. <laughs> All right. I was wondering so, if I could do it while moving, essentially. <laughs> exactly. Uh, using the attack action, you can make a special melee attack to shove a creature, either to knock it prone or push it away from you. If you're able to make multiple attacks, you can this attack replaces one of them. The target must be uh, no more than one size larger than you. Uh, instead of making an attack roll, you make an athletics check. Yeah. So... Versus their athletics or acrobatics. You succeed if the target is incapacitated. If you succeed, you knock them prone or push them five feet away from you. Um, so there is no requirement for you to take additional movement. So yeah, you absolutely can. Okay. So I was thinking either that or it's the same sort of check, but move through, grapple, and essentially like shoulder check them into another <laughs> square thing. So the, the shove the shove would be the best one. Okay. I will attempt that then. Okay, so um, go ahead make me a roll. Let's do it. Okay, so your athletics check versus mine that is going to be uh, that's a 19. That's a 12. That's a all right. It's one thing she's good at. So <laughs> rushing through your friends, ba basically you just can't stop in an allied square. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure if doing the action counted as stopping, or who was counted as. I don't consider it such. Okay, so as long as I don't end in that square, my turn. Uh, ba basically, you're moving through to make an empty square. So that seems okay. that seems like what would happen, right? Um, it's what yeah. Lyric could have done if she hadn't taken the disengage action, right? So she could have tried that. So instead, you're going to just buckle down, brace through, slam into the first one, and push them five feet back. Can I essentially, like, flavor this in? Because it's Anthea who's right in front. I basically, like, hurdle jump Anthea and, like, just tackle shove. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Car Carmilla okay. sees you running and just, like, hunkers down so you can like bounce Leap off frog. her and then off the wall <laughs> just okay. step on Carmel's back step off the wall hurdle Anthea's head okay that is fantastic um all right skeleton number five is going to take a swipe it's yeah Sindri you square it up I'm gonna take let's take a swipe uh Sindri that is going to be 16 does that 17 is my armor class so. oh it swipes past your head uh, the next one is going to try to make a move around and let's do it and that's a seven uh, it's going to stab at your gut you're going to be able to dodge out of the way oh boy uh, new initiative round top of the initiative bros uh, we are at Carmilla okie dokie I don't think I can do that unfortunately um, because there's nowhere to push anybody. 
because uh, there's two guys there. Mm hmm. <laughs> can I? Can I give the help action? Mm -hmm. To any per character within five feet of you, which includes, uh, because of the diagonal, that includes Ella. Perfect. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I think I'm going to try and give Alessandra the help action um, to try and take this idiot down. Um, Beautiful. I think, I think she's going to grab, like, a handful of arrows from her quiver like five arrows and just like huck them <laughs> at the feet of the two red brands in hoping to trip them all right um that is going to uh definitely help alessandra on her turn anything else on your turn um can i swap spots with anthea if anthea lets me uh, yeah, you'll move there on Anthea's turn. Basically, I'll let you. I'll let you save your move to swap with her. Well, I was thinking, can I pick her up <laughs> as an object interact? Yeah, <laughs> if Anthea uh, lets me. So just I'll, I'll allow it. Do you okay. want that, Anthea? Yeah, sure. Okay, question. Anthea, do you mind? I'm, I'm sorry. There's a lot Did of blood I not right now. One out of the way, so I could replace in front of Anthea. Oh, yeah, you are there. You are in front of Anthea. Yep. Yeah, um, but I was just he was in front of me until more. just a few moments ago. Oh, no, And the mind. person who was in front I'm of her did not get shoved out of the way. Because I thought I was going to be in the room. Uh, there's there's two in the hallway. Oh. Hmm. So you were I able to push one back into the doorway. Space with them, though. I don't know, but I got stuck in the wall, guys. Okay, I just every okay. yeah. No. Hold, hold on. So what happened was Anthea was at the end of the hallway. There you go. One of them, yeah. one of them approached. You pushed her back. There was another one that was at the edge of the room that was firing down the hallway with a bow. Yeah. Oh, okay, because the one that's immediately in front of me had Anthea on it for me. So I thought that, I thought I was shoving oh. the one in front of her into the room, and I would be in the room. Okay, no. that makes more sense now because that. Yeah, that's why I was saying I was jumping in Thea's head because she was immediately in front of the enemy as far as I could see. Okay, no, this is, this is, it is as it is now. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then, I, so I'll use my object interaction to pick up Anthea and put her out of the way and kind of push her towards Lyric a little bit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, take up my stance for in case anybody pushes past Anthea or, or to help Anthea. Beautiful. Sindri, you're up. Uh, uh, um, all right. <laughs> so that's the mood. Uh, okay. I'm going to use uh, an unarmed attack against uh, the skeleton I already really hurt. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to use my determina uh, my inspiration to reroll that. Okay, do it. Uh, so I'm going to use bardic inspiration. <laughs> and I'm going to use my determination. Oh my god, how bad were those rolls? It was a 7 and then a 5, so like... Uh, but here's the thing, if I don't mm. kill them now, I'm gonna die. So... Fair. So, though I th I'm pretty sure the one that I was fighting was very, very injured. It is very injured. It's mostly bones. Very little skin. Yeah, so I do another uh, 5 points of damage to it. Alright, it is going to xylophone to the ground. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I'm gonna take a swing at the other skeleton. Okay. And that's 19 to hit. That's going to hit. And that's going to be seven points of damage. Okay. And uh, with another Kia, it explodes in front of you. Can I flavor this as slamming them together and then throwing yeah. them onto the ground? I think so. And then, WWE, and then WWE, like WWE style. And then, yeah. And then so I look at the red brand and just yell, uh, your next flesh as I... Uh, <laughs> I ain't made of bones, bitch. She's going to say. <laughs> And uh, it, it's her turn, so let's let's do this. Actually, it's not her turn. It is the one that uh, Alessandra shoves turn. My bad. <laughs> uh, so the one that Alessandra shoves is going to go, nobody shoves a red brand, and is going to try to take a stab at you. And that is going to be uh, with Shield of Faith up. Does a 22 hit you? Yes. Okay. Shield of Faith gives me 20. 
20. Okay, that's going to be six points of piercing damage as she stabs underneath uh, into your upper thigh. And Thea, it is your turn. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to try it again and huck a, a firebolt. Oh, I All almost right. did the wrong one. Give it to me. I'm going to use my determination for an 18. Okay, good. That's going to hit. Roll me damage. Thanks. I know. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Hmm. Five. Right in the middle. Okay, your firebolt is going to sail by and is going to um, sear right in this one's face. She's going to yeah. raise her arm to block. And... Um, all right, and that is going to hit. Do you have a do you have a right. uh, bonus action? No, okay. not yet. Uh, Alessandra is uh, shield of faith uh, concentration. It is. Okay, can you roll roll that for me real quick? Um, it was six points or, of damage. Yeah, so or half half the damage. Yeah, so uh, just so DC ten. Higher, so ten. Uh, so yes, I rolled sixteen. Perfect. Okay, uh, down the initiative. It is Lyric's turn now. Right, so that other option uh, plan didn't work very well, so I think Lyric's going to try and kind of lean around to get a uh, line of sight on, uh, let's do the one closest to Alessandra, and mm -hmm. say, um, well, once again, Vicious Mockery for a DC 14. Okay, that's a fail. Okay. Um, and we'll say something along the lines of, You're a disappointment to your grandmother. You barrel bottom. You, you, you're stupid. Stupid bandits. Um, and is going. <laughs> Once again, do three psychic. Have a three psychic? Oh, this one's looking real unsteady on her feet. We're whittling uh, them down. <laughs> whittling them down. All right. Uh, red brand number two. Uh, is going to take a swing at Sindri. Is all right. One, one. Not a one. Uh, oh. Sindri, uh, she is going to lash out, and you are going to deftly parry away with your scimitar. Yeah. As she only gets a thirteen. I'm gonna make you bleed, bitch. She says. I'm already bleeding. I'm already bleeding. <laughs> Alessandra, it's your turn now. You have advantage. You have advantage. Oh, excellent. Um, I am going to try and stab this person in front of me then. Okay. Uh, for 19 points of damage. Or not 19 points of damage, 19 <laughs> Holy to hit. Holy crap! <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, wait, you could, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could smite at your level. I cannot. Because guess what? Great. How many spell slots I get? Two! Yeah. And they are gone. Oh, fair. All right. <laughs> one last so. game and one this game, so. All right. What'd you get? Give me damage. Uh, that is going to be seven. Okay. Seven. She is hanging on by a thread as you bring your sword down into her. All right. Okay. These skeletons are dead. Uh, and the last red um, brand is... Sorry, what? I'm going to use my bonus action to enter a defensive stance. Sounds good. Um, I the, have a quick question. Uh, yes. Uh, the the square in which the red brand is right in front of Alessandra yeah. is the one where my axe hit, my first axe hit a skeleton. Can yes. Alessandra use her movement to scoop a hand axe back to me? <laughs> uh, there is one on the floor. You could use your object interact action to kick it back to her, yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right, Don't so <laughs> you hear, do you mind? <laughs> I, do you, Alessandra, do you mind? Points down. Oh, not at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, this red brand ruffian at the entrance is going to... Oh, this friend is really badly damaged. Um, is going to aim an arrow and fire it at, uh, at Alessandra. 
and lose a dice on the floor. Uh, so the the replacement dice is going to be a an eleven. Um, your shield is going to pink the arrow off the side of it, and we are at the top of the initiative again with Carmilla. Hi. Uh, I have a hand axe now. You do. Um, I am going to throw it at the person in front of Alessandra. All right, do it. Oh, where's my die? <gasps> it wasn't in my cauldron. Oh, no. I didn't put it in my cauldron, and I rolled it at one. Oh, no. No. Okay. Um, there is going to be a tremendous swish. Uh, what's your damage bonus? Plus three. Okay. I'll roll this for you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, Alessandra, you're going to take uh, four points of slashing damage and are going to I'm feel so suddenly very light as a hand axe flies by, cutting the nape of your neck and slamming into the wall behind you. And you are all going to see a huge chunk of gorgeous copper hair fall to the ground as you cut off <laughs> Alessandra's ponytail. Oh no! Oh my oh. God, Alessandra, I'm so sorry. Oh, that, that that's much lighter. <laughs> all right <laughs> cinder you're up why are we so bad at this i have rolled so well i have to keep my die in my cauldron it's the only thing that saves it uh, and then i'm going to use uh my cutlass to take a swing at the red brand that's in front of me that sounds like a like a brilliant idea Capital. listen <laughs> I have knocked out so many of your friends, but you I'm going to take pleasure in killing specifically. Uh, and that is going to be a... Spend my determination to make it a 12, not going to work it. So I'll just make it a 10. But I will use a uh, mar use my martial arts to okay. uh, go for the kick. And <laughs> also rolled a 4. So that's two 4s in a row. So, um, so 10 and 10. So, no. Okay. You have determination, by the way. Uh, does, w do you think a 12 would... Uh... I can't tell you what I think. I know. Uh, you know what? I'll use a determination on my scimitar attack. If that, hey, it my, hits. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like That's going to be five points of damage. Five points of damage? All right. Yeah. You are going to slam uh, your blade into, into her side. Um, yeah. All right. And she's going to grunt with pain. Uh, Alessandra, the one in front of you, is going to look at you and go, <laughs> Your haircut sucks, bitch! And take a swing at you. Uh, and that's not going to hit. Um, you're going to be able to like raise your um, your shield in time to catch that. Um, and Anthea, it is your turn. Oh, that's really not very nice. Um, oh, no. And... She's going to throw a firebolt again. Do Let's it. Go. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a 19. So that, that would be a 24. How do you do it? Let's go. Um, I think I'd like to catch her hair on fire because that's not very nice to say to someone. I actually just realized a mistake I had made, by the way. Um, and that's a 10! Sorry, I got excited. Oh, is it 10? Oh, you are going <laughs> to just points. incinerate her. Um, uh, her hair catches fire and you see her face melt as she collapses to the ground as a corpse. And I realized I'd made a mistake. Um, and that is that uh, Amy had cast uh, Vicious Mockery, which gives disadvantage, doesn't it? Except to attack mm -hmm. you. So my attack roll actually against... Ella that I just made, I had to re-roll it and I just re-rolled it into a one. Oh, so no! I'm yeah, not going to take your victory advantage. away from you, yeah, Anthea, yeah. so yeah. you are going to firebolt that. And as that happens, the one behind is going to tumble forward as oh. she was bracing the one in front of her to prevent her from being shoved again. And Alessandra can make an attack of opportunity against her. Nice. Oh, sweet. Does that make sense? Basically, like, you were in a tunnel, one was kind of huddled behind the other, and the other one dies, and she goes, oh, shit! Ooh! <laughs> yeah, I'm fighting for real. 
<laughs> what do I add to this? I've forgotten. It's an attack roll, so you add your strength plus two. Uh, 21. Yeah, that's a hit. Aha! Max damage. Uh, yeah. 11. Nice. Nice. All right. Slamming. Did you take dueling style? As you, or no, you took Tunnel Fighter. Um, that was weird. Um, it will come okay. In eventually. All right. So Yay. slashing in, you're going to cut deeply into her, and she is going to start to look a little afraid. Uh, Lyric, it's your turn. Well, you know, um, if she's looking a little rough, da rough now, when I peek around the corner. We're gonna we're gonna follow up with my dagger because I haven't thrown that yet in this current set of combat, so it's time to do that. Uh, hey, okay, go ahead. Um, am I disadvantaged or is it just a bit of a bonus to AC? For... So I actually was mistaken. Um, it's not. It's a bonus to AC always. I was thinking disadvantage for um, it's it's full obscurement that does that. So it's just mm, in a bonus right. to AC that they have. Okay. Oh, motherfucker. Um, it's not a one, but I That's definitely it. don't think I'm gonna hit it with an eight. Do you have line of sight? from where you are i would be peeking around the corner i'm gonna say um, that she can lean around the corner above anthea because okay. she's about half height yeah so i was gonna do that but i don't think my eight will do it it will not your dagger flies down out of your reach sadly do you have anything for a bonus action no <laughs> all right now we are down to uh, the red brand that is fighting with Sindri. Sindri, she's going to look at you. Blood's pouring down her face. She's going to raise her short sword and go, Die, you ass. And he's going to slash out. And it's it's a, I'm sorry, my friend. It's a 10. <laughs> Alessandra, yeah. it is your turn again. He really had us in the first half. <laughs> okay. So this one in front of me. I really want to get out of this space, so... She gonna... is very badly wounded. I would like to lean back and, like, kick shove her. But you'll, you'll only move her five feet if you do that. That's fair. I can still move up to the doorway, though, then. You know what? You can actually probably move diagonally through the doorway. Okay. Also, so you could get into the square next to the door. I would love to do that and get out of this hallway. Okay. All right. I have my roll for my athletics check versus yours. Go ahead and roll. Uh, that is going to be a 19. Okay. I rolled a 15. Uh, so bracing, you are going to push and are you going to pop through to the corner? Yeah, I will. Okay. And uh, so you push past her. I will then go into my defensive stance. So if okay. she tries to go forward into the hallway to after the others, I will be able to attack her. Okay, so uh, dropping the... So she has a short bow in her hands right now. Um, oh, she's real hurt. Carmilla, how hurt do you look on a scale of 10, let's say? Are you bloody? Uh, on, on a scale of 19, I look like a 14. You're always a 10 to me. Um, <laughs> so uh, she's going to she's gonna draw her short sword and lunge at Alessandra, hoping for a glory kill. She's not going to get it with a 12, though. And you are going to buff it, like just block her sword out of the way. Top of the initiative, Carmilla, you have a corridor. I'm, I'm making a run for it, man. <laughs> There it is. Uh, 17 plus 5 is 22. Roll me damage. Uh, she's gonna like all, all, very Alucard sort of Naruto run down the hallway in sort of... Is your sword gonna spark on the ground behind you? 100%. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Good. I wouldn't have it uh, any other way. That is unfortunately only 6 damage, but... 
Uh, that is enough. Tell me how you do it. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's just going to come through and is just going to like swing up and be on the other side of them. And they're just going to sort of shudder for a section, a second, a second, and then fall into two pieces. Perfect. You can continue your movement if you'd like. Uh, Get out I'm of this damn tunnel. Continue my movement over. Can I, can I move to this other side? Yeah, you could totally move through Sindri or run atop the coffins. Probably is more you. Uh, perfection. Do a wall uh, run yeah, above the 30, coffins. Yeah, that's thirty feet total. So yeah, I'll get I'll get to the other side uh, and say, "Sorry, Sindri, we hit some traffic." Sindri, it's your turn. Uh, my short sword attack is going to be the thing that I do. Um, is it? Yeah, and that's going to be a twelve to hit. A twelve to hit is a hit, as we've established. Uh, and that's going to be six points of damage. Oh no, she's very hurt. <laughs> I know, but I also have a, a, a martial arts attack as well, and I'm gonna is, drop that is off it my just desk. A, is it just a headbutt? Oh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be uh, 18 points of damage. Uh, not 18 points of damage. 18, 24 to hit. So 24 let me roll to hit. My, uh, you know what? Uh, go ahead and roll it. It might as well be 18 with this number with it's, the number of hit points she has it, left. It's seven points of damage. Okay, seven points of damage. How do you do it? Yeah. So this the same way I took out that bugbear in the cave before he knocked me out. Uh, Sidri is just gonna grab by the throat and just crush the windpipe and then slam her on the ground too. Whoa. <laughs> I love Whoa. that Sidri's part WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, the background is not kung fu monastery. It's bar fights. It is. <laughs> Perfect. So good. All right, and with that. The combat is going to ebb. You take a brief pause, looking around. Ooh. What do you all do? Uh, can, can we take a breather? I'm feeling a little lightheaded. I'm just going to oh. sit down. Oh. Uh, or maybe I'll go Perhaps into the room not, and sit down. Not in the hall? Yeah, um, let's, let's go into the, the, the room. The coffin looks really comfy. Maybe not. <sighs> maybe don't um, get in it, though. But it looks all, hmm. all plush and padded. Okay, fine. They really aren't as comfortable as they look. Oh, that's unfortunate. I, and if, if the lid closed, it might be difficult to open again? I'd probably suffocate. I think you're right. Terrible way to go. Um, uh, I'm going to check the door uh, where these red brands came through. All right, checking the door where the red brands came through, you are going to peek into a small room. Well, uh, it's very thin, at least. This long room is partitioned into three areas, with iron bars walling off the north and south. Filthy straw lines the floor of these cells, the hinged doors which are secured by chain and padlocks. A pair of human women are held in the cell to the south, while a human boy is confined to the north. And as you look into the room, you can't help but remember what it was like back home with similar pens for your meals or your family's meals. Uh, this someone, are any of you good at opening locks? Thank the gods. Syndra will look at the, the dead red brands for uh, a set of keys. All right. You are going to find a set of keys on one of their belts. Uh, I'll toss them to Carmilla. Uh, she'll catch them, walk up to the door and open it. Are they like locked up, locked up? They are, are, they they are locked inside of the cells. They are not manacled. Okay. Uh, she'll open it and then kind of like really hastily like step backwards and sort of into the shadows of the other cell all right so these these commoners looking in front of you are dressed in torn soiled rags all the three of them are obviously obviously family what you're looking at it appears to be a mother and her teenage children. All of them have deep brown skin, bright, sparkling eyes, just kind of a tawny shade of brown. 
they look at you with a bit of thanks as they... Uh, I'm, I'm guessing from the noise outside, the mother says. You're not with the red brands? <laughs> so she's just covered in blood. Uh, no, we're uh, we're not. Um, Thank you so much. Of course. I'm I'm, I'm Myrna Dendrar, and these are my kids. Have you seen my husband? What does your husband look like? Like my son. Bigger. They were... They attacked him. They hurt him really badly. I don't know if... I, well, I don't... if he was not with them, and he is not a goblin, then we have not seen him. Oh, thank the gods, maybe he's still alive. Lyric, what are you doing right now? Oh, they seem to have that well in hand. Lyric's going to start poking at the doors to the south. There are a pair of double doors that open easily at your touch if you want to. Maybe just one of them open a crack just to get a sense of what's beyond. Opening them, just a crack. You can see a large, long corridor that stretches out before you. A door to the south hangs open at the end of it. It appears that your quarry has escaped. Well, I think I found the exit. Um, and it seems like Glass Hand is gone. Staff, Glass Staff. Oh, what did I say? Hand. Oh, well. Ugh. Yeah, that would be unfortunate. It wouldn't be very good to make a hand out of glass. There might be a couple more bandits left. Staff out of glass isn't great either. No, it's not, but it's kind of aesthetically pleasing. I think we expect another three of the thugs from outside as well. They might. I think they were staying in the foundation. We might have a little bit of time before they get here. You look also hurt. You should catch your breath, too. I've, I'm very tired. Yeah, it's very tired. Um, we should get these ones out of here, though. They both... Well, the children huddle up next to their mother and look at you with grateful eyes and then pass down into the rest of the building, yearning for confirmation of their husband and father's life. What you do is up to you, which we're going to find out after we take a quick break, because it's bio time, folks. Uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. So, as you pull up inside of the crypt and take a short rest, the Dendar family heads back into the room, into the crypt, out of their cells, and takes a much-needed breather. You all fought your way all the way through all of them, the mother says. 
S- sort of. Wow. You must be strong, says the um, says the boy. We left some of them tied up to uh, face justice, hopefully. Not particularly strong. I'm... Uh, oh, uh, that's my, 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 my dagger. Just one, one, one second. Oh, well, yes. Carmela will get her... <laughs> we'll get her her hand axes and look very sadly at the one that cut Alessandra's hair and is kind of avoiding Alessandra a little. <laughs> <laughs> Lyric would like to try and is gonna rummage through the pockets of the various um, ruffians just to collect more knives and daggers because if she keeps throwing the one, she's gonna lose it so quickly. So you can get she three more. additional short swords and three additional daggers. Oh, brilliant! Um, I'm gonna take two short swords and how many daggers? Three. Three. Yeah. Two. yeah. Well, since Carmilla is clearly trying to avoid Alessandra, and by that she's probably off on her own a little, which makes it really easy for Alessandra to corner her. Oh no! <laughs> uh, she's, she's like trying to you live. Always one separate of the... yourself from the group. <laughs> I think Alessandra's gonna probably come up try behind to like, you. One of the when you're getting the axes up again. Okay. And yeah, just... she's she's lift she's grabbed her axes and is like lifting one of the uh the lids to one of the coffins to like see if there's just bodies or if it's something else and probably gets startled and drops it. Blank, 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 yes, cuz I think Alessandra will come up beside you and put a hand on your shoulder. <gasps> oh, um I didn't think I was so that sorry. scary. Uh, sorry, no, just on on edge. Uh, it's a lot of lot of memories in places like this. Um, I'm sorry. What can you do for you, Lady Alessandra? Um, I I wanted to thank you. Thank I know it was probably an accident, what? but um, she'll touch her hair at that point. Oh, and I'm so I am so sorry about that. No, 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 no. Thank you. I was never allowed to cut it because I wasn't a fighter. Oh. Well, be decorative if you're not going to fight. Or you're too weak uh, to. Oh, I I think there is strength in many ways that oh. is not a sword. Thank you. Although you are also strong in that way as well. So. Do you need a hand? Oh no! I just um, I was making sure this wasn't like stolen gold storage and just making sure it was actual bodies um uh, uh, sure yes of course if, if, if that you don't mind grave desecration why is it okay because he raised them as skeletons i don't know i've never really come with <laughs> that it's not like ethics class i've talked about that <laughs> uh <laughs> she's she's briefly uh very brief. Carmilla's very briefly offended, thinking, "Is it grave desecration, or thinking, or, or is it not?" She finishes the sentence of "because you're undead," uh, <laughs> and then that's not what you say, and she kind of like calms down a little bit. Was- Alessandra hasn't figured it out yet. I know it's <laughs> just wait until I get my third level of it will affect you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she's gonna. Uh, well. Yes, I suppose. Well, I suppose if we ourselves are not making a mess of it and we put it back the way it was, I don't think the gods will have a problem. That feels sensible. Perfect. Uh, I also never we'll really lift. had much in the way of like scenarios. There's more just a thing is bad. Yes, there is much nuance to many things in life. And. Until you end up in the situation where you have to act, you act very differently than you think you might sometimes. That makes sense. All right, so we're checking all of them. <laughs> I should go over to the next one. <laughs> well, yeah, lift up the coffins so and see if there's just bodies. A place to hide things that a bandit would think of. Sandra's going to ask uh, Carmel to borrow the keys to see if that'll open the the store the locked room down the hallway oh, oh i sure. also have a key <laughs> i have a key too oh okay let's uh 
We'll, uh, Sindri will look at the, like the family and be like, we'll, we'll get you out of here in just one moment. Of course. <laughs> um, uh, as you head down the hall, Myrna, the mother, will approach Lyric because she's the one that's not opening crypts and will say, <laughs> I can't thank you enough for helping my family and I. Oh, I don't have anything um, that I can give you right now, but uh, if you... Not at all. It's a uh, um, happy... No, 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 no. Look, I mean, you're adventurers, we, we, right? So I don't have it on me, but if you're ever near Thunder Tree, my family Thunder used to. Tree. It's in the north. If you ever are in that direction. We were going to maybe go to Thunder Tree. My family mm -hmm. had an urban alchemy shop there. Wow. You should be able, should be able to find it. And if, if you do, um, when. When the calamity happened, the undead overran the place we ran, and, well, I have a family heirloom there, an emerald necklace. It's, it's worth quite a bit, I, I imagine, but I never dared to return it because of all the undead. Quite. It's behind the bookcase the inside book? of the, the storage shelves, uh, down beneath it. You're welcome to it as a thank you. Oh, uh... Thank you. If we're, if we're ever in Thunder Tree, we shall Please. see what we can find. Thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, Sindri and, uh, and Theo, you're going back there too, right? I have to know. Yes, sure. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, let's heading, go. Heading back into that room, uh, you're going to crank open the door. And... Uh, looking in the room, you're going to see racks of weapons <laughs> lining the walls here, including spears, swords, crossbows, bolts. A dozen dirty red cloaks hang from hooks by the door. We can pretend. We can play dress up, pretend we're them. Uh, Sindri will throw on a one of the, the red cloaks and say, oh, I'm a red, red brand. I'm a huge asshole. Oh. No one likes me. You're <laughs> uh, so good at that. I know, right? I've learned from lear like listening to lots of them talk for three minutes. Yeah, um, they do that. Yeah. Um, Sindri will poke his head out to the hallway. And we got some uh, potential disguises if we want to try and sneak up on the last of them. But Oh, lovely. I'll sneak up Here, behind you like... guys. Because it's, it's a little <laughs> bit long. <laughs> It's gonna look like she's like wearing her father's <laughs> robe. <laughs> I'm sure there's some in smaller sizes. I don't they know if they do. All be tall humans, can they? There's there were some goblins. Oh. Uh, Having Lyric's gonna start I rummaging. I don't know how that makes me feel. Folks. We can hem them. I know how to what hem. What do you mean? Yeah, we can we can hem them. We could, okay. or, 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 or I can just take this and Lyric's going to grab one and is going to start just like hacking the bottom off with a knife. I it guess works. that works. <laughs> Make me a sleight of hand roll to see how trip. how even you keep the seam. <laughs> it wasn't, I wasn't trying, hoping for it, but we'll see how well this goes. <laughs> we'll see how well it goes. Uh, for a sleight of hand, that's going to be a 12. Okay, so it's fairly, fairly even. You might need to finish off the edges a bit more. Uh, I'm not gonna wear this but, to prom or anything, or party or anything. I think it's fine. Halflings have proms. Yeah, I'm not mm. gonna wear this to halfling prom or anything. I never went to prom. I think that's okay. How not halfling prom? I don't actually do yeah, that. Either. Either. It's so cute. <laughs> it's, it's, it's half prom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alright. <laughs> that got me. Uh, uh, so looking into the room and along those, uh, you are going to find that a couple of those weapons are actually, like, surprisingly nice. Um, all in all, they're going to hold 12 spears, 6 short swords, 4 long swords, 6 light crossbows, 8 quivers with 20 crossbow bolts each, a lot of stuff. However, 3 of them, uh, a short sword and uh, 2 matched crossbows are particularly well made. One of the cross... Uh, actually, the two matched crossbows are made with woodwork that is ingrained with, inlaid with silver 
along it. Very lovely design. Uh, and one of the short swords has a pommel and guard that is set with semi-precious stones. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they would be twice as valuable as a normal weapon, or it would just be kind of cool to show off on your character. So, <laughs> sell those because it doesn't help with stabbing better. Um, Sentry will sadly look at the, the really nice short sword. If you must. I don't must, but I do want it. Um, well, I mean, dual so wield. Dual wield. I mean, uh, at least. Oh, I hold on to it for four. future. Yeah, and four yeah. of them are going to need them. You know what? I can three just. I don't know. Like, if we have money, I can mm. just buy it from our shared purchases because. I I think this is really nice. It's and in like, the storage room. They're not going to miss it. it. Just take it. All right. Yeah, sure. So, so we'll just grab the nice looking one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if it belongs to anyone or anyone uh, wants it back, I'll give it to them. But uh, It's quite possible the original owner's dead now. So, I mean, mm. I hope not. I hope, it's, I hope it's someone I can give it back to. Right. Sort of. I kind of. I kind of really want. It. Anthea's going to take a couple bolts to replace the one she's lost. You can totally take a full reload. Basically, you're nice. just you walk. You walk over an ammo clip like in a first-person shooter. Just you just reload. Yeah, also, uh, uh, do you want the, this uh, crossbow? I was the, just about nice to look one? at that. Let me see. Oh, uh, is it a light crossbow? It is a light crossbow. Which I means for you, it is a heavy crossbow. Mine. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll switch them this one I don't know I can calibrate it um Lyric do you want a crossbow uh no I've got these and she'll just like pull up the daggers and then like splay them out in hands. okay that's not so good for 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 far ranges, but for close here, it's it does fine. Okay, that's what made me think about the the crossbow. Uh, Sindri will poke his head out down the hallway. Uh, Lady Alessandra, Carmilla, do either of you need crossbows, or spears, or long swords? Even a really nice one. He'll dangle the nice crossbow in the hallway. <laughs> oh, it is nice. Uh, <laughs> She'll reach for it. <laughs> You're quite nice. <laughs> That's a light one? Yeah. Yep. Sindri just knows how to get through all the girls' hearts. Give them weapons. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's pomp. <laughs> so, it, it's filigreed. <laughs> My lyric does end up grabbing a, a crossbow, but it's like one of the really generic ones. And it's like the most simple, like zero bells and whistles, like no frills. It's best it's to like, start with those anyway. Work. <laughs> hmm. uh, just, am I proficient? Oh, yeah, I'm proficient with that shit. Oh, uh, I'll grab a, <laughs> uh, short, uh, a, short, uh, a crossbow as well. Uh, and just sling it on his back amongst his, all the other stuff. Uh, he'll like a look down the hallway um, to the meow, 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 meow. Uh, the 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 Dendrar family. Mm -hmm. do, do you require any weapons? I'll take one. The boy says he's about thirteen years old, and his mother nope. just smacks him upside the head. You'll do no such Without thing. Framing. I'll take a spear. Uh, yes, <laughs> he'll he'll come back with the, the spear for them. I can take one too, Mom. The older daughter says. She's about about 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. I said will go back and grab another spear. Thank you. Look, I know we need to get out of here, but if it's not too much trouble... Your husband will... Sidri will look at... Because before he answers, look to Lady Alessandra and Carmilla... Them to look and the really like the quite hurt, uh, uh, Anthea. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go try and you fixed it? 
I'm feeling a bit better. Okay. Like, we uh, can do this. We can, and we what? we we should. Uh, during all that time period, at some point, Alessandra will mm -hmm. use lay on hands on herself. Okay. Sounds good. If we uh, short rest, I'm just checking to see if Song of Rest requires a long rest between, but it looks like I can do it whenever we do a short rest. I think, yeah, I think mm. that's the trick. So, yeah, we'll we'll do that um, if we're short resting. Yeah. Um, okay, well, in that case, I will time. do that instead of lay on hands. That makes sense to me. Bad, yeah. Can I get a D6 hit points, even though I don't have any hit points to hit dice to spend? Uh... What is I the wording on short rest? To, but yeah. or on uh, what is the wording oh, on song of rest? So on song of rest, it says if you or any creatures with the, um, who can hear you or performance re, uh, regain hit points at the end of the short rest by spending no, one or more hit dice, each creature is. those creatures regain. So unfortunately, points. not unless you drank a yeah. potion, in which case, then yes. I don't. I think we burned through our potions earlier because everything hurts and we're dying. Are yeah. there any in the coffins, or is it just bodies? It's just bodies, bodies, bodies. Uh, none on the red brands? Uh, none on the red brands. Unfortunately, they don't make enough money for that. I will say that one of the one of the corpses um, it does have a very elegant rusted cod piece, but that's it. It's not I a potion. Once we're done resting, Lyric wants to go back to the room that um, had the notes about and the stuff for an invisibility potion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Partially to drag Anthea back to try and make an invisibility <laughs> potion because that actually sounds super useful, but also to see if there are potions there specifically. Absolutely. So with a bit of time, you take you take a few minutes to rest up and recuperate, except for Sindri, who's just really tough. Um, and uh, do you all head back there? Mm -hmm. I think Carmilla will actually wait here just to watch the door sounds good all right so carmilla you wait inside of the crypt and uh, the rest of you start making your way back do you head through the north passage or through the south passage going through the secret doors or going through along the bridge near the north which everyone is the most direct path which mm, probably through the secret honestly, doors to me, yeah that's what i was thinking as you are walking through there Myrna will take a glance down fearfully into this large cavernous chamber and will pause. What is it, Mom? Kids, stay here. Can I... Can I borrow one of you? She says to the party. Of course. She takes a few steps to the south looking down into into that crevasse. Uh, Heaped at the shall, bottom. Shall I come as well? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Heaped at the bottom of the crevasse, as you approach, you'll see that there is a body unceremoniously dumped, its limbs ragdolled over each other. Its skin is dark, its clothes are of a similar fabric and make. She nods. And I didn't think he'd survived, but it's... It's good to know. I'm so sorry. We can get your children out without them seeing. Thank you. They don't need to remember him like that. He's no. a good man. What was his name? Than. Uh, you're all going to remember a story of a uh, a man that had been murdered by the Red Brands named Than. Yeah, and his family was missing. Yeah. I have my notes. I'm glad you stabbed them all. I didn't see it. And she'll lean in and lock eyes with you, Sindri. Oh. Did they suffer? Yes. Mm. 
Is it wrong that I feel good about that? No. Suffering is part of our existence and some deserve to suffer more than others. Well, I'm glad that someone sent them to hell. Whichever hell they ended up in. Thank you. There's some that that we have tied up to send to prison. But we're going to make sure that the rest of them aren't coming back. Good. That's its own kind of suffering. I hope they rot. And she'll turn and start walking back to the north and you'll hear, Mom? Mama? And then, with a look, they know. There's no wailing. There's no crying. They've used that all up in the what, 10 day that they've been trapped in that cell. While the red brands dully thought of some type of ransom to request. And so they just head back to the north and sit and wait for you to finish. Take as long as you need, she says. Do you continue on into the back chambers? Yes. All right. As you move through, you move through what can only be glass staff's quarters. As I said before, the walls of the bedchamber are covered with all sorts of drapery and scarlet cloths. There's a writing desk with matching chair. Do you look around the room? Okay. If you want, if you want to look through the, the lab, I will search this room once over. Sounds yeah. funny. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Um, looking around, you are going to see that there are various papers and notes stacked neatly on the desk, mostly consisting of written orders to apothecaries and alchemists in nearby settlements for materials for the workshop. However, as you are flipping through, Cinder, you will find a rolled up and sealed letter with the wax symbol in the shape of a spider. If I can open it without breaking the seal. Or, uh, you know what, I'll just cut. A sleight of hand check, perhaps? Maybe a sleight of hand check. Guess what I'm proficient in. <laughs> nice. Right. Let's see if I can actually get my D. Here we go. Uh, that is a 25. Uh, you are going to slip the edge of your, of your scimitar, or your cutlass, uh, beneath it and just pry it open ever so gently unrolling it. Can you make me an intelligence roll? Just until Oh, Jesus. Cinder is many things, but not smart. Okay. But that's a 12. That's a 12? Um, yep. You're going to be twigged by this, but unless you remember, I'm not going to suggest it to you. <clears throat> the letter reads, Lord Albrecht, my spies in Neverwinter tell me that strangers are due to arrive in Phandalin. They could be working for the dwarves. Capture them if you can, kill them if you must, but don't allow them to upset our plans. See that any dwarven maps in their possession are delivered to me. I'm counting on you, Yarno. Don't disappoint me. Yarno. Yarno, 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 Yarno. Sorry, let me just take a look through. It's either pronounced Yarno or Yarno, depending on how you read it. Uh, so, as you're reading through that, is anybody else searching this room as well? No? No, I'm probably searching the lab. Okay. Uh, so back in the lab, you can see the different uh, decoctions in front of you. Um, and if you'd like to try to finish that in invisibility potion, you can make me an, um, an arcana roll. Yeah, I want to try it. Okay, don't roll a one. Actually, it doesn't matter for you. Well, don't roll two, but well, don't say that. 
Um, and Lyric is happy, happy to offer assistance and, and pass things over if... <gasps> oh, really? Are you proficient with Arcana? Uh, yes, in fact, I am. Okay. Whoa! Okay, so you can roll with advantage then, Anthea. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. Let's go! Let's go, let's go! Okay, uh, that's, uh, do I have determination? Yeah. Uh, you do. It will be an 18 with determination. <laughs> okay, so it's going to take an hour, but you will have the brewing process is going to work, uh, and you are going to see it absorbs its components, destroying them and imbuing them into the the, the decoction, into the potion. Um, so you will it's only so be able beautiful. to make one. Uh, but wow, you would be a really good alchemist. Mm -hmm. All right, so... As you are doing that, what is Alessandra doing? I think just kind of orbiting around the others at this point and kind of keeping an eye on the situation and okay. being security. Sounds good. As you are looking around, you are going to um, keep an eye on things. You'll see that the Nothic is moving in the shadows to the south, but keeping distance from you. Goleming for lack of a better term. Sindri, you finish reading through the letter uh, and looking around the room, it's not the only thing in here that catches your attention. The name strikes you, but you'll see that there is an, a wooden chest at the foot of Glassstaff's bed. Oh. I wonder if there's anything in here. Uh, mm. He's going to open it, try and open it from the side. Okay, make me a slide of hand roll, please. That's a 12. All right, you kind of open it from the side, and it will slip and almost slam. Well, you'll catch yep. it at the last second. Uh. And you'll open it, and it is overflowing with loot. Looking inside of it, you're going to see that it looks like the cream of the crop, the best pickings that you could imagine from the Red Brand's various uh, illicit pursuits, let's say. Uh, all told, looking down, you are going to see a number of things that are going to speak very deeply to that, uh, to your previous lifestyle as a sailor and adventurer. Well, Gambler, soldier, fighter, yeah, etc. Uh, you are going to find a hundred and eighty silver pieces, a hundred and thirty gold pieces, a silk pouch with five carnelians worth a certain amount of gold each, uh, as well as two peridots. It also has two scroll cases inside of it. You are not proficient in Arcana, so you no. might have a little bit of trouble reading it, but you can make me an Arcana check to see if you can figure out what they are. How did I miss... Oh, there it is. Roll the dice. Take a chance. Oh, there we go. 19. 19. Okay, you are going to hold one up flip through it and recognize that it is a scroll of hold person. Pretty oh. dope. <laughs> and then you unroll the other one and you feel you feel this chill run up your spine as you hear Anthea just going <laughs> as she's brewing in the other room and like silhouetted behind the scroll of fireball you see her working. You have a choice, a very critical choice. Anthea? <laughs> uh, 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 oh no. Hmm? I, have, I have a scroll for you. Oh, that's very nice. Just give me a second. I'm still working. Uh, so, Cindery will walk up and slide uh, Lyric the scroll of Fireball. 
seeing Lyric will look at it, probably eyes will probably just like why like eyebrows will go up like a fraction, but like with no other expression change, and we'll just be like nod and tuck it away. And he'll just like uh slide the sc- uh scroll of the whole person into Anthea's pouch. Oh thank you. We call this plan F. <laughs> we call this plan F. Uh, uh, nice surprise for Anthea when Anthea's having a really bad day. <laughs> the cheer me up scroll. <laughs> the cheer me up scroll. Exactly. Keeping chocolate hidden around when you part this Um He'll look to Lady Alessandra and say, There is a large amount of gold in that chest. Um, that probably is <laughs> from all the town's suffering. And some from the spiders. And he'll hand the scroll uh, from gla- glass off from the spider. As we knew, that we're working together. I, I'm i sure there's something to be gleaned here, but I'm a little distracted right now, to be honest. He's like looking down at more money than he's seen in his entire life. Lady Alessandra, if you accept the scroll from Sindri, can you make me an intelligence roll? Sure. Um, that is just straight int. Straight int. Uh, dirty 20. You immediately will recognize the name Iarno Albrecht from a conversation that you had not that long ago. Uh, if we're lucky, we can find my friend. He got here a bit before me. Sildara told you. Yarno's a good wizard. He came here a bit to set things up. Get ready for me. Take a look at the place. I haven't heard from him in a while, though. I'm kind of worried the Red Brands got to him. Wait, is Sildar the frickin' spider? Dude, like, is he the one in behind all this shit? Do you say that? Yes, but more in Anth- in um, Alessandra's say, voice. Say it in Alessandra's voice. Wait, is Sildar the spider? What? Well, his what friend. He, what he said came ahead of him to set things up. Was Glassstaff? I don't think that was the name. Yarno. Yarno. Oh, yeah. Well, either that or Yarno double crossed him. Or he's being controlled. That could be the case. It certainly sounds like setting things up is maybe. Hmm. Not what we assumed. Well, he did set up this really nice rig. It's pretty good, actually. Oh, we're almost done here. Traveling okay. across the compliments evil, even if it is good. Yeah. How did the spider learn of the Gundra- the rock seekers' plans? Do you want to investigate around? Yeah, sure. I think right. we probably should. <laughs> yeah. Taking that point, you look through the laboratory. You can see that class staff looking through here, anyone with any arcana skill at all, is going to see that he was a wizard of middling skill and was trying to master the art of alchemy for himself and was having a bit of poor luck, as Anthea already saw. The books and notes that are scattered around the wizarding workshop are fairly basic, rudimentary texts. But among the tomes is a book written in Dwarvish. Anyone here who reads Dwarvish? Oh. Gnomish, which is not the same. It is not. You'll be able to recognize it as Dwarvish, though. Yeah. That's Dwarvish. I don't know what it says. Sindri, do you speak Dwarvish? (laughs) So I have 
I know we had this discussion early on and I can't remember because I had two written down, but I don't have my third one written down. Did Well, is it dwarf I... now and forever? Yes, because I couldn't, I didn't choose goblin. I specifically, and if, if okay. I'm friends with Gundren for a long time, that makes sense. That does make sense. So looking down at it, you are going to see that, uh, t- flipping a look through it, it is a journal of an adventurer named Ermon. U-R-M-O-N. It describes the history of the Lost Mine of Phandalin, oh, pardon me, the Lost Mine of Phandelver, and the Forge of Spells. Uh, all of the information you have about uh, this basically reiterates a lot of the information you have about the Lost Mine to begin with that you've kind of learned through stories, legends, and so on. However, beyond the basics, it l- records that a magic mace called Lightbringer was commissioned by priests of Lathander, the god of dawn, from mages working with the gnomes and dwarves of the Fan Delver Pact. It was lost when the Way of Echo Cave and its mind vanished from history. Beyond that in the room, you'll see that most of the materials have no real value, but to Anthea they probably will. Bottles hold some rare reagents. Mercury, dragon bile, powdered nightshade. You know that these you could probably sell these for about 25 gold each. Nice! It's like Christmas! I just have enough for what I'm saving up for. Once I sell everything, of course. Hmm. Uh, I'm take, Sindri... take the things. <laughs> Sindri will look to Lyric and uh, Alessandra as Anthea, or Anthea's uh, distracted. And I say, I'll uh, discuss this with you back at your your house once we've got a bit more privacy. Um, Lady Alessandra, which deity do you uh, serve? I think it might have been, it was either Helm or Tear, probably. That's a great question. <laughs> dun dun dun. Because <laughs> Oath of the Watches does not necessarily mean that you have to, is a deity, <laughs> per se. That's mm-hmm. fair. Uh, the Faerun Pantheon. I'm going to just give you a quick rundown of it because uh, you have not been uh, playing a lot of Baldur's Gate or anything. Uh, but uh, the ones for a paladin that are pretty basic are um, uh, Helm and Torm. Uh, Helm is the god of watchfulness, paladins, protection, and protectors. God who preached vigilance and preparedness. Um, bodyguards and the like tend to follow him. Uh, Lathander is the god of creativity, dawn, renewal, birth, athletic spring, self-perfection, vitality, fertility, and youth. Favored by those who dispelled undead and blessed those who planted new life. Worshipped when something began and was usually pretty big with the elves. Uh, then there is um, the other one who is Tyr, who is basically the same god that we have. God of justice. Okay. And law. What were the first two again? Uh, Lathander and Helm. Okay, and Helm was the justice Watch- bodyguard one. Watchfulness, Guardian's Protection, yeah. And the Lathander was the elvish one, a bit more. He's more elvish, yeah. He's always connected to elves whenever I've played with him. Okay. Um, uh, thank, thanks to Equinox for uh, I am proficient in Dwarven yep you looked that up thank you for putting that in the wiki random Equinox I feel by the way everybody like go to our wiki probably Helm is the one that her family follows and thus has never really been too introduced to much else mm-hmm. so, oh, does the name Lightbringer mean anything to you religion check sure uh that is a 14 uh you've heard stories it, it's a weapon that was lost to the ages um, magical quite potent magical. and dedicated to uh, lathander magical weapon uh 
nobody knows where it is. It's been lost. Um, I think it's uh, he'll Blacklander. hold up the book. And someone might have found a clue to where it might be. Oh. Uh, I can. I'll read more about this. I'm not the fastest reader, but I'll uh, tell you more later. A sudden gout of steam erupts out of one of the coils that Anthea and Lyric are working on. Oh. And you'll hear as a so clear, it's basically crystal clear Pepsi liquid starts to distill into a potion vial. Ta-da! So this should be a potion of invisibility. If I did it correctly, and I think I did. It's looking pretty good. You do marvelous okay. work. Oh, thanks. Well, they've actually got really, really top tier reagents here. It's really impressive for... I, I said it was really good, but the reagents are really good. The, the setup is workable. I think this is something we can repurpose to your, your uses. Mm hmm. It's a lot to take, though. We can come back. That's true. Don't want to break any of the glass, right? That's true. It is pretty fragile. Carmilla's well, going to duck her head in. Are you all ready? It's been yeah, about an just, hour. We just did it. Well done. Thank you. Swirl, 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 swirl. We should probably. Do we want to go for. Go for. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Do, do we uh, want to go further and uh, try and track down the last, of the, the last of these assholes? Ruffians? Let's do it. I think that's a good idea. try to deal with them all. Right. With your plan in hand. Question. Class staff. All right. With a plan in mind, you prepare to continue purging the Red Brand Ruffians from Thandalin. Which I think you're going to have to do next episode at bah, 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 bah. level three. Yo! Yo! Yeah! Oh, heck yeah. yeah! Heck yeah. So, everybody, roll your hit points. Let's do it. Yay! Let's go. All right. Yeah. Woo. Aww, and uh, so subclasses. <laughs> uh, Rolling ooh. an eight. Oh, perfect. Krista's got to make a decision now. I rolled unless, a five. Unless so they multi-class to stay out of that level of fighter for a level. <laughs> no, see, I'm debating because I was going to go you re -roll champion. ones, right? You re-roll ones and twos in my games, yeah. Thank God, because that would equal zero for me. <laughs> oh my God! What? Ha -ha. I have a Amazing. minus to con. Remember? Holy smokes! I forgot. <laughs> Nine. So that's eight hit points added. Oh. Ouch. Yeah, um, that's rough, man. I'm, I'm debating because I was gonna go champion, mm. but I don't know. She's she's feeling much more of a of a battle master kind of vibe. Mm, it's pretty it's pretty potent and 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 to be perfectly honest i think i'll have more fun with it then have more fun with it so i think i might go a battle master uh, yeah go a battle meister battle master okay I, it's it's very hard to not just go full groot and steal the moon uh <laughs> Or, well, or have go after Anastasia, sir. Like, it's very hard to find the middle. <laughs> I just look for need Malcolm. some help with the decision. Yeah. I have to pick what my celestial revelation is. Oh, what are your options? Um, I'm not going to go with the necrotic shroud one because that's necrotic. But there's two radiant options. So radiant consumption, mm -hmm. searing light temporarily radiates from your eyes and mouth. For the duration, you shed bright light in a 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. And at the end of each of your turns, each creature within 10 feet of you takes radiant damage equal to your proficiency bonus. Until the transformation ends, once on each of your turns, you can deal extra radiant damage to one target when you deal damage. Um, extra damage equals your prof proficiency. Radiant Soul. Two luminous spectral wings sprout from your back temporarily. Until the transformation ends, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. 
And once That's on each of your turns, had. you can deal the extra radiant damage to one target when you deal damage with an attack or a spell. Um, given the amount of time you guys have been clustered up, one of them would harm your friends. That's what I was thinking. Because I was like, well, if I get in a big group of enemies, it's great. Every turn, I'll be doing two, three, maybe four damage to them. We just have to position like that. We just have to remember and try to... True. Get so that positioning not, right. It is only ten you. feet, yeah. which isn't huge. It's but it's a big bubble, which is dope with Tunnel Fighter too. Yeah, because if they try and move away from me, then <laughs> I get yeah. them again. Um, but also, flying speed is pretty freaking amazing. You would too. have a flying speed on this character before Malia got it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> You've been pushing for Malia to have it in shards for five years now. Well, it's my level 17 power. I can't wait to get it. I'm so excited for that. Perma flying. I'm just going to have wings. It'll be great. Well, you can tell me before next game, everybody's rolled their hit points. Yeah. I have yeah. Right. five hit points. Oh, my God. Well, 28. Oh, my God. There's the Alchemist test more hit points we than tough. the Paladin. I love it. Be tough. I rolled really well. I'm going to have it. to be an armor monkey to, like, Avoid dying as, as it goes can. further. Yeah, I have hey, hit points, but an AC of 13. So. We need, you need better, better armor. armor. We are buying yeah. you extra armor. Sindri will buy well, you better armor. I could have, like, that was like starting, I could have gone with chain, oh, but I was like, I, I think we're going to be doing a lot of sneaking. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not <laughs> bad at that. And then I roll <laughs> me roll ones. So we can tinker. Point, chain. We can tinker so that it looks underneath your coat so you still look badass which, what you need to do is get <laughs> alessandra's yeah. armor you need to get alessandra's armor the the armor in her at her aunt's place fixed up mm, and then you can you just go. have alessandra's armor beautiful we love a hand-me-down chain mail <laughs> yeah uh, yeah honestly Andres. that's all i need i get my breath weapon now so that's kind of cool you borrow your uh, breath sweater. i can walk on feelings Oh my god, can we just team up? In. I think I think we just need to team up, Chris, and I can hold you from the ceiling and you can shoot <laughs> fireballs. That would have made this well, episode way no. easier. Also, I'm <laughs> going to just this now. You're wild. I was Twitch? truly like It's great. I was having a moment, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, damn, having like a like a 30 foot line of fire would be really nice right about now. <laughs> just like right? mm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. he's thinking about it like yeah that's All the next right, level so, so next episode you're going to eat some scorpion peppers and gain special powers exactly. <laughs> alright hey folks thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk we'll be back next week but before then if you want to support the channel be sure to head over to patreon.com slash dorktales where you can get access to a ton of additional content months early uh so much stuff is coming back this month uh now that all of our players are back in session uh we have the finale of strixhaven next week we have uh radiant citadel and technocracy coming next month we have old gods of appalachia coming uh next month and by next month i mean in like two days uh it's november so like real soon uh and then on top of that so much additional content dork pods dropping that serial killer podcast that i made with kel or at least us talking about it that podcast is going up and i've got some special things that we were talking about before game the uh, the tier list videos I'm going to start making, which are going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to get Patreon on them first. Um, but head over to Patreon for as little as five bucks. You could join the uh, VIP section there. And uh, there are a lot of other tiers above that. Speaking of which, thank you to our divine producers, uh, Professor Multiverse and my mom, two separate people. Uh, there we go. Uh, to our demonic producer, Precarious, pew, 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 Funkle Breck, you're awesome. Uh, and thanks for running 10 Candles the other night, which you can find on Twitch or uh, on YouTube very, very soon. Uh, big thank you to our wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric and the Ink Goblin. And where would I be without the high counts of the Patreon? Patreon, Terran, Buddy, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Sheffield of Death, Larouk, Sorcerer Sanguine, and Mike Baxter. We will see you all very soon. And I look forward to it as we continue with Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Good night, everybody!